welcome to the World of Warcraft Arena World Championship live from BlizzCon. Jackson Bajira Blight, and we are here in Anaheim, California, where two teams are looking to make history. We have Splice looking to become our first ever repeat back to back world champions. And of course, we have our North American team, Method, looking to secure the first ever BlizzCon win for their tournament veteran and captain, Healer Sidu. I know he's a crowd favorite. We got a lot of people excited here today to see some awesome arena matches. I'm fired up. These teams are ready. Let's throw it over to the desk to get these games going. Take it away, Josh. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jackson. The hype is real in this room right now. The amount of energy coming from this amazing crowd. You guys, you guys are seriously the best. This is absolutely fantastic. I could not be more excited to be standing up here right now next to two of my best friends. Of course, my name is Josh Allen, AKA Lore. Joining me here at the caster desk, Elliot Venzel, AKA Ven Rookie, and Rodney Pare, AKA Talbadar. Guys, we're at the finals, man. How you feeling? One word, excited. <laughs> what an incredible crowd we have here today. We have two of the best teams we could possibly imagine. The crowd favorite, of course, Method NA, a stacked roster, Sidu, uh, Snuts, Beanslayer, as well as Smexen going up against the, re uh, the <coughs> previous champions, Splice, also a stacked roster as well, Swapsy, Botar, and Fabs. I think we have some incredible games in store for us today. Yeah, we have some unfinished stories here. Fabio trying to get his third BlizzCon victory ever. No one has ever done that. No one has even had two before, so it's going to be amazing for him if he can take that. And Sidu trying to get his first BlizzCon victory ever. Yeah, and let's actually take a look at the brackets to show how we got here to this point today. Going through the championship bracket, we saw Splice going up against Tempo Storm, one of the NA favorites, taking them down three to one. Uh, and then Method NA up against Northern Blue. I don't think anybody expected that series to go the way it did as strongly as it did. 3-0 for Method NA up against Northern Blue. And that brings us to right here, right now, with Method NA versus Splice in our grand finals. Guys, uh, these teams, uh, there's just so much that we could be saying about any of these guys. Of course, talking about Splice real quick, the three members of that team are going to be Swapsy, Botar, and Fabs. There's only three of them because that's all they need. They've been doing incredibly well this entire time just to be able to get here. Of course, uh, like you were saying earlier, the repeat champions potentially uh, is what they're going for here today. They won last year. So, I mean... Results, results. Maybe they have a, a good shot at getting the championship title here again this year. Of course, Method NA is going to be Sidu, uh, Sidu Snut, excuse me, Smexen, and Bean. Those guys have been playing incredibly well and just putting a ton of practice into being able to do their best here today. So uh, I think we got a few people cheering for them in the crowd as well. Of course, there is also the small manner of some prize money to go ahead and talk about here. $250,000 on the line. A good chunk of that has already been claimed because there's only two teams remaining, but the first place team will be taking home $120,000. Second place gets 50 grand. Now 50 grand, still a good amount of money, but doing a little bit of math there, an extra 70 grand to, to be able to take that first place. I think both of these teams want that as well as that title of Arena World Champion for 2016. Yeah, absolutely. That's what these guys are playing for. Uh, this is actually, so talking about method a little bit right now, uh, this is Sidu's fourth time competing at BlizzCon. This is Snut's fifth time competing at BlizzCon. This is the fourth time that Snuts has been in the grand finals for this tournament. These guys have a lot of tournament experience on their team, followed up with Smexen and being very, very important members of this roster as well. Played phenomenally so far. Splice, on the other hand, as well. I mean, these guys are the returning champions. They've been at BlizzCon for an incredible amount of time. Uh, these players I've played with and against since like 2010. That just shows <laughs> the consistency coming out of these teams. Yeah, talking a little bit about the format of how we actually got here today, uh, let's break that down for people who may not have been following along previously, which if you weren't, I mean, what's wrong with you? These games have been absolutely epic, but we did break things down into two groups of four teams each. We had eight teams total, uh, and it was double elimination in those groups. So inside each group of four, every team had the opportunity to lose once and then be able to fight themselves or fight their way back out. The top two teams from each group advanced to the single elimination championship bracket, uh, at which point, 
again, it was single elimination. Losing one series dropped them out, and that was when we saw uh, Tempo Storm and NG Blue end up dropping out of the tournament, I believe. Uh, so all of these games are also being played on patch 703, uh, just to make sure that everybody's had a decent amount of time to be able to practice it. Obviously, patch 7.1 did release to live servers uh, fairly recently, but didn't want to switch things out from under the rug on these guys too quickly, letting them continue to play the rest of this tournament out in patch 7.0, uh, which is actually really interesting for how this ends up working out, because we've seen a lot of already in just the, the week and a half now that patch 7.1 has been out, we've started to see some meta shifts a little bit. But patch 7.0, the, the games were very different. What are some of the differences that we can look at. Uh, Rodney, I'll throw this one to you. What are some of the differences we can look at going from 7.0 to 7.1? First of all, I know we're seeing a lot of the Frost DKs and Windwalker Monks got some changes for PvE that are now influencing PvP. So we're seeing a lot of those in the new patch. On the older patch, I'm, no I'm noticing a lot of these Holy Paladins coming out. They have a lot of strong healing with that Avenging Crusader. And it's just going to be a wild ride here because these guys have a ton of comps at their display. I know even uh, Splice has some comps we haven't even seen yet that they've talked about. So. Yeah, and talking about those compositions actually gives us a good opportunity to break down the uh, tournament rules uh, and how exactly the flow is going to go as we progress through these matches. So the first game uh, is always going to be on the Grand Arena, and that's going to be a double blind pick, meaning that both teams, they obviously declare what compositions they want to play in terms of the classes and specializations they'll be using to our admins, but not to each other, and not even to us. We usually don't even know what's happening until the, the, the game actually comes up on the screen. Uh, after that first game, it's going to move on to this sort of draft pick mode, where the team that lost will be able to declare what composition, or excuse me, what map they would like to play on. Uh, the team that won will then be able to declare what composition they'd like to play on that map. And now that they know what map they're playing on, as well as what composition they'll be playing against, the losing team will have the opportunity to declare their composition at that point. And of course, up until this point, all the games have been best of five, but this is the grand final, so we're going all out here. It's going to be a best of seven. We're going to see quite a few awesome games between these teams. But looking at that back and forth blind pick into the draft pick setup, uh, obviously there can be a lot of back and forth there, but we've also seen a lot of points where one team, they, it doesn't even matter that they get that, that uh, extra advantage. They're able to just take, we've seen a lot of 3-0s, 3-1s. Elliot, how much of a factor do you really think that that double, excuse me, that back and forth, loser picks map, winner picks comp, loser picks comp, how much does that actually affect the tournament? Uh, well, it affects it a lot. I mean, both of these teams at this point know what the other teams can run. Of course, they might have some cards hidden up their sleeves, some special secret compositions that they might be able to run. But putting your best foot forward in that first game, making sure you win on a Grand Arena is really key. One of the things I like as well about um, the finals being a best of seven is we're going to see some of those maps we haven't traditionally seen in a while. Uh, maybe we'll see some more Blade's Edge, some Black Rick Hold, some Ruins of Lordaeron, more of those specialty maps uh, that we're going to have to see in this finals. Yeah, and let's actually break down the maps that are available just to refresh everybody on what maps we have uh, available to us. Of course, like we were saying earlier, that first game is always going to be on the Grand Arena, uh, and so that is going to be in this patch 7-0. So it's the old faithful Nagrand Arena. We don't have the, the, the shiny new one just yet for this tournament. Uh, other old favorites that are still there are Tolveron Arena, Dalaran Sewers, Tiger's Peak, Blade's Edge, and Ruins of Lordaeron. But this is Legion, so we do have two new maps into the mix. That's Black Rook Hold and Ashermane's Fall. Uh, and we've seen a couple of those come out. We haven't seen Black Rook Hold yet here at BlizzCon. We've seen Ashermane's, uh, I think, once or twice. But Black Rook Hold, what sort of situation, uh, Rodney, I'll ask you this, what sort of situations do you think that Black Rook Hold, we, do you think we might end up seeing it in this series? You know, these are some of our, our, our most veteran players that we've had in years. There's some of these people on stage who have been here multiple times, so they're the ones who are going to be looking to practice on all the maps, make sure they know every little detail about it, and take advantage of that. So I would not be surprised to see that in this match. Interesting, yeah. Well, we will be finding out here very, very soon. Uh, of course, like we said earlier, it is going to be a double blind pick on the Grand Arena for the very first map. So at this moment, we're just locking in the compositions that the teams are going to play uh, and making sure that they've declared that to our admins. Again, not to each other. Uh, but taking a look at these two teams, once again, Splice, there's only the three of them because that's all they need. Uh, that is going to be Swapsy, Botar, and Fabs. Uh, and then Method, that is going to be Seedu, Snuts, Smexin, and Bean. Uh, these guys, they all have so much tournament experience experience under their belts. In fact, I think Bean is the only one that hasn't been in the finals out of BlizzCon before. Uh, I'm, I'm making that up a little bit here. I'm not 100% certain on that one. Uh, but these guys, they've played so much. We've seen them in so many, at least online tournaments as well. Even Bean has played a ton in a lot of like the, the GCD TV tournaments, all of that over the past. So 
I'm excited, guys. I think we're going to see some really good games here. Yeah, although we haven't seen Bean in this tournament so far, he was a very important role for Method to actually qualify to regionals as well as qualifying at regionals and winning regionals to get to BlizzCon. They have him available if they need him for those specialized comps running on that Retribution Paladin as well as, as, well as that Feral Druid. So uh, it is possible we see him play today, but so far Method has been dominating with that Demonology Warlock, that Enhancement Shaman, and that Holy Paladin composition. Yeah, we did see Bean busting out the uh, the Retribution Paladin during the America's Championship, and he actually playing the the Prot Paladin during uh, I believe that was actually just last week at opening week is when we saw him playing the Protection Paladin. Uh, let's also talk about Splice a little bit though, because these guys have some serious tournament experience under the belt. They are our returning champions. They won last year. Uh, that's Botar, Swapsy, and Fabs. Uh, obviously, tons of tournament experience. Talking about Fabs for just a second, uh, only guy who's won BlizzCon twice. Looking for his third victory here. Uh, how, how do you guys think that's going to uh, sort of affect him a little bit going into this, knowing that he's won twice already? He's just got, like, is this just sort of rote for him at this point? Is this sort of like, hey, whatever, go through the motions. I guess I'll win another BlizzCon, no problem. Or is this, uh, is this, uh, is this the pressure on for him here? Yeah, last year, BlizzCon Fabs actually didn't play any games. He was on the team that won. He was an important role at the regional tournament to qualify, but he's looking to sort of reprove himself because he did have that criticism that he didn't actually play any games at BlizzCon last year. He's an incredible player. We've seen him play Rogue. Uh, he's known for his Warlock play, but we haven't seen him on that too much so far, as well as playing that Hunter in that Beast Leaf setup. Just a well-rounded overall player, very consistent. This is the guy I've played against at 2010, so he's been playing for so long. He's no... Um, no stranger to BlizzCon, and uh, I think we're going to see good things from him in this game. Yeah, and I think that tournament experience is really showing through these couple of teams as well. Uh, we've talked about Method a lot already, but I think I think the player, the elephant in the room that we should address talking about Method is, of course, Sidu. This is his third time at a BlizzCon. He's 0-3 he's right now. He's looking to make that at least 1-3. Does not want the 0-4. So and you can kind of tell the crowd back there right now, they're, they're feeling the hype. They're feeling the method hype right now. I, I think we have a little bit of crowd favoritism going on here. Uh, but these guys, they seriously, they've played together flawlessly throughout this entire tournament. They've been practicing like crazy, too. That's the one thing that really, really impresses me about this team is just how hard they have knuckled down and said, no, we're going to practice, 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 practice. We're not going to go to crazy parties. We're going to go back to our hotel rooms. We're going to go to our practice area and just be practicing. And you can really tell that's really affected how well they're playing. Yeah, and I've played with Sidu in the past, and he has amazing work ethic. He'll go back to the hotel after the first day of arenas and watch the VODs. He wants to see how his team did, how it looked from the spectator point of view, get a gauge on what happened, and he'll watch old videos of us playing and say, okay, here's what we could have done better. Like, let's play against that same comp again one more time. And he just has such great work ethic, and he really shows here on the BlizzCon stage. All right, guys, so uh, it's right about that time. We need to get some predictions from you guys for this one. Elliot, I'm going to go to you first. And now, I know, obviously, you're super good friends with the, the guys from Method. You've played with them in the past, even in tournaments played with them in the past. I know you've played against Splice a lot. So I feel like you're kind of uniquely in a unique position here to be able to give some sort of prediction. How are you feeling? Do you think Method's got this, or do you think Splice is just too hard of a behemoth to overcome? Well, one thing to mention is Splice, um, the method is actually, the only team method lost to so far was Splice. So Splice has that going in this, uh, but I got to give it to my boys, method. I think uh, the powerhouse combo of Sidu, Snot, Smexin, and Bean, I think they got it. They got the crowd on their side as well, but they got, they got a big, they got a hard team ahead of them here with Splice. These guys are very good. Like we said, they have a lot of tournament experience, but overall, my, my vote's for method. And that energy from that crowd is, that's actually a real factor in how these guys end up playing on the stage. It's actually uh, a big deal. So keep that energy up, guys. Uh, I think Sidu might need some of it. So let's talk to you now, Rodney. Your predictions. Do, so, are you feeling Method as well, or do you think Splice? So my heart is all for Method. However, I have full faith that Splice is such a great team that Beast Cleave team unbeatable to me. They are doing so well on that stage, playing it better than anyone else. They have previous BlizzCon winners, the last year's winners. They are such a great team, so I'm going to have to give it to them. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, uh, take a cold, hard logic approach here. I'm going <laughs> to remove myself from the equation. I'm going to look at this purely log logically. We know that Method has already lost to Splice once in this overall tournament. We know that Splice is the returning champions. I'm going to go with Splice here. However, I want to give that with the caveat that that's a 51% to 49% prediction coming from me right now. These guys are so evenly matched that I had to step back and say, okay, let's look at what's happened in the past in order to be able to give a prediction here. So I'm going to go with Splice. 
But we've got one more prediction to get. We're going to head down to the stage and check in with Jackson Bajira Blighton. Jackson, how are you feeling about this matchup? Hey, thanks, Josh. So I've heard what you guys have said. I'm with Rodney and I'm with Josh on this one, both in the fact that my heart is with Method. I think it's going to be close. The issue is where this is, we're talking about game one here. And just in terms of looking at the teams backstage, you know, Splice has been all smiles backstage. They are the returning champs. They're confident, but I think that smile might actually have a little bit more to do with this first blind pick. I'm very curious to see what they bring out in this first matchup, and I think it might catch Method off guard. So I think this first match, I'm going to give it to Splice. All right, thanks so much, man. That, that's actually a really good point. This first blind pick here, uh, this can really sway the entire, the way this entire Grand Finals is going to go. If you get a good counter pick going into this, because again, it is a blind pick. Neither team knows what they're gonna be playing against. Oftentimes we see teams going forward with their, their, uh, their most comfortable comp, the one that they're, they feel is the most stable and that they've got the best uh, all around chance with. But every once in a while, we see a team just bust out something crazy that they don't think the other team's gonna be expecting at all. Uh, and they're able to claim that early win. So we'll have to see how that ends up going. Of course, we will be getting into this match here very shortly, but before we do that, I do want to take a brief moment to run through our tournament UI so that you guys can tell what it is you're going to be looking at on the screen during this actual match. So we've got the health bars on either side, but we've also added the cooldowns. You can see both the defensive and offensive cooldowns available underneath each player's name, uh, as well as what talent they've selected in that first row of honor talents for their PvP trinket. When they use an offensive cooldown, they're going to light on fire, and when they use a defensive cooldown, you'll see that shield icon pop up behind them. Of course, out in the middle of the field, you'll be able to tell who's on what team by the colors of the circles beneath them on the ground, uh, as well as the class that they're playing in the nameplate. Uh, and then the dampening indicator at the top, still there, it's been there for a while. I think we're all kind of used to that at this point, but that will show you uh, how much the healing is being reduced. Dampening, if you're unfamiliar with the mechanic, the longer an arena match goes on, the less healing uh, the healers will be able to do in the actual arena itself, which means eventually someone's going to die because uh, the healer's just not gonna be able to keep them up anymore. So we will be getting in this match here very shortly. I want to go back to that point we were talking about with this first blind pick. Do you think we're going to see anything super crazy coming out of either of these teams? Or do you think we're going to, like, this is the Grand Finals. If there's a time to play it safe, I feel like the Grand Finals is that time. But if you have that crazy risk that you can take in the bay, that crazy comp that you've been holding on, I mean, if you're not going to use it in the Grand Finals, where are you even going to use that thing? Elliot, what do you think? Are we going to see something crazy here? Or is this going to be... Is this going to be just standard play from both these teams? If I was Splice, I, I'd see no reason to swap your composition. There's no reason for them not to play that Beastly composition. It's been doing incredibly well against the comp that Method is prim primarily running, that Enhancement Shaman, that Demonology Warlock, and that Paladin. So Method has to think that Splice is going to be running that, and we'll have to see how they respond. Yeah, and we will be finding that out here very, very shortly. We are going to take a really short break, but we will be right back, guys, with Game 1 of the Grand Finals here at the Arena World Championship at BlizzCon 2016. Stick around. World of Warcraft Arena World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. Everything that I do in my life is working towards getting on to the big stage of video gaming. I don't want to get second place this year. Like, I'm, I'm going for first. I won't be happy unless we win. My name is Andrew Rodriguez, and I go to University of Texas at Arlington. Daniel Lee and I go to University of Connecticut. My name is David Young, and I go to school at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. My name is Michael Udall, and I go to ASU. Heroes of the Dorm is an amateur tournament focused on college teams, playing not for prize money, but for tuition. This is my first year competing in Heroes of the Dorm. Gaming at first was just a hobby, but now it's kind of evolved into part of my life. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona. Gaming was definitely frowned upon. I would think, gee, what a waste of time. You guys ought to be studying algebra or anything worthwhile. My parents used to hate when I played, but now they're like, this is so cool, you're going to Seattle for playing a video game. 
Welcome to the Heroes of the Dorm Heroic Four. Here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, four college teams have come to battle it out. We started over a month ago, and now we have Tennessee, UT Arlington, UConn, and Arizona State. We all felt really good after the win, but we came here to win the whole thing, so the work's not over yet. You don't reach that level without the dedication and the focus and the endless hours honing your craft. It's going to take a determination and discipline, just like succeeding in anything in life. It's just, it's intense, that's the best way to put it. Until you play the game and try to excel at it, you just, you have no idea. An outlet like that where students come together and, and share the same interests, that's what it's all about. This was the future of esports that we imagined. Take a look, the energy blows up in a matter of seconds. Shot low on HP, but the boy with the oh, they are going for the core. They're gonna be able to save it in time. The World of Warcraft Arena World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We are here at day two of the World of Warcraft Arena World Championship for our grand finals between Splice and Method. Uh, of course, we've got to talk a little bit about day one as well because the games yesterday were absolutely, seriously, some of the best games that I have ever seen in my entire time I've been watching WoW Arenas, which has been a little while. I've been playing the game for like 12 years. It's been a little while that I've been paying attention to this thing. So seeing some of those matches yesterday, in fact, we do actually have uh, a short video that's going to recap that a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and head on over to that video and get a quick recap of what happened on day one. Yesterday, the eight best teams from around the world took the stage at BlizzCon. Only two remain. North American team Tempo Storm demolished their group, winning back-to-back -back series 3-0. This put them into the semifinals, where they faced last year's BlizzCon champions, Splice. Splice showed Anaheim why they wear the crown, sending home Jamili and his squad despite their impressive performance earlier in the day. Splice is going to take this series 3-1. NA is not out of it yet. One hope remains for the region. After fighting their way out of the lower bracket, Method took down Northern Gaming Blue, the winners of the European Regional Finals. Method will blow them out of the water and advancing to the ground. Will Splice win back-to-back -back world championships? Or will Sidu get his first ever BlizzCon win? It's NA versus Europe as two regions collide in the World of Warcraft Arena World Championship. All right, All right. yeah, we had some absolutely epic games yesterday. Uh, between uh, not only the teams we're seeing here on stage, but also some of the teams that were eliminated on the way here. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and call out, I think the, the Tempo Storm versus Panda Global series that we saw yesterday that ended in a double cross kill, like 1v1 at the end of an... Uh, is this real? Is this real life? Like, at a BlizzCon, we've got a double cross kill, Rogue versus... Ma that was absolutely incredible. Do you guys have any other favorite that you want to call out from yesterday? Um, I, I'd have to agree with you. That series was, series was probably my favorite, seeing two of the powerhouse teams running that rogue mage setup um, and that cross kill happening, that 1v1. Obviously a lot on the line for these, for these guys. Uh, just really incredible overall. The one thing I will say, uh, like you said, I think this is one of the best BlizzCons for World of Warcraft Arena ever. Uh, just the pacing of the game overall. These teams have really brought it this year. They've been practicing really hard. All these guys are really focused, and it's nice to see that this year. And I have to say, that Mage Rogue at the end was so amazing to watch. That 2v2 into the 1v1, it was just a like classic throwback for me to Vanilla WoW, to Burning Crusade, where Mages and Rogues used to duel all the time. And it was just the same situation where it's like, OK, the Mage is dueling Rogue, Dragon's Breath, and tried to poly him. No, I have to go for damage. It was just such an amazing thing to watch. And of course, the Rogue coming out on top, as usual. So dang those Rogues. <laughs> 
I mean, okay, so if we look at past BlizzCons, talking about what we've been seeing here the past couple of days, the first one that I cast uh, was actually BlizzCon 2013, and we saw some really, really slow series there. These games have been super fast, super high, and if, speaking of how fast they are, we're going right into game one, Splice versus Method in the Grand Finals here at BlizzCon 2016. Yeah, let's hear it for both of these teams. This is going to be an incredible finals. We'll have to see how they decide to open up. Looks like Splice is going with that Beastly Method once again, going with that traditional Enhancement Drum and Demonology Warlock Paladin. Splice pushing in immediately. Botar actually getting the Hodge over onto CD. It looks like they're opening up onto Snuts. The War Stomp coming up from Botar. Once again, they want to get aggressive early. Smex him with the counter Bloodlust onto Fabs. The Hodge going out onto him as well. Axe toss over onto Botar. Fabs having to run away. taking a lot of damage right now. Sidu as well, though, having that sacrifice onto Snuts. Almost getting smoked there really early on. And there's a wing from CD trying to top his team up, make sure he doesn't dive right in the open air. It's really scary against this Beast Battery, Battery Hunter, Enhancement Shaman team, but we do have a Hex on the swap to shut down some of that pressure, and they're always taking so much damage from this team. It's what they're known for. It's what Splice does. They just do tons of damage. Bodar taking a ton of damage, though. They're trying to get the bubble. They do actually get his bubble very early on in this game. Good job from Method there. Watch out for that blood that's coming back up from Swapsy, though. Yeah, Vengeance Crusader is going to be falling from Botar as well. Splice has to hold on for another 30 seconds. It's Method's time to get aggressive. Beast, uh, Beast Mastery is up for Fabs right now. He's going to be doing a lot of damage as well as that Bloodlust up for Swapsy. So Splice in a good position to do a lot of damage here right now. Snuts, of course, still has that Sacrificial Pact. He still has his defensive cooldown. CD still working with the bubble as well as the Bop and that Blessing of Sacrifice. So Method in a good spot right now. Yeah, and it's interesting to see Sidu playing double sacrifice with those wings. He's trying to do, go for the long game here, make sure he doesn't die in the opener because he saw Goreki die to the same thing yesterday with the Avenger Crusader. And here they go on the Botar. He immediately has to use his bomb. Smex it all over him right now, doing a ton of damage. He's trying to counter it with his Avenger Crusader, but Smex is just doing so much. They're both all over him. It's getting 10% HP. Are they going to take it down right here? Yeah, Smex had such a well timed Counter Strike totem there. Splice has to be careful of that. They did a lot of damage to their own healer with that totem, so well done by Smex. And Hodge going out on the CD though, the adaptation trinket's gonna go out onto him. Uh, Smexon trying to slow down Splice a little bit with that full hex over onto Swapsy. But right now, Sidu having such a hard time dealing with his damage. He needs to hold on for another 30 seconds for his wings. He might have to actually preemptively bubble so he can get off those casts onto Snuts. It's just an overwhelming amount of damage coming out from Splice. The axe toss over onto Swapsy though. Method trying to counter pressure the best they can. Down to 20%. This could be it. Botar doesn't have any cooldowns left. How is he gonna keep him up? Smexon and Snuts just doing so much damage. Yeah, Botar waiting for his Avenger Crusader to come back up. He has it in 10 seconds. They should be absolutely fine, but Snuts looking in big trouble here. He still has his wall available, but that's about it. CD needs to get his wings up. It's up in five seconds, and he does have that sack available. He should be absolutely fine here. Yeah, he should be absolutely fine. You're right. Um, right now, Method on the back foot just a little bit right now. Smexon does that have that heroism, though. If they can get a good cross CC over out onto Swapsy. Seated, though, getting swapped to, having to use that bubble at just in the nick of time, down to 10% HP. Now Smexon wants to get aggressive. The full fear out onto Botar. Swapsy's going to be taking a little bit of damage, uh, but it looks like he should be okay. Yeah, and Smexon's trying to kite back. He wants to bring Botar in. He's trying to get CC on him so he can't abuse that Venture Crusader. Really good hex on the Swapsy and Deer on the Pops to shut down some of this damage. So they're just taking so much throughout the entire game. They need to split it up a bit. The wing's going to be fading here from Sidu in a bit, and they're going to be in big trouble once that happens. Yeah, Sidu actually almost completely oom on mana right now. The overwhelming damage coming out from Splice. Sidu, of course, not playing that Avenger Crusader. He has to keep his nuts up here. He gets a huge heal onto him. He still has that Blessing of Sacrifice as well, and he might have to use it, but I don't know if he can heal through this damage at this point. Botar as well doesn't really have too many cooldowns to work with, but that Avenger Crusader is coming up for eight seconds. That's going to be really good for Splice. Yeah, and Sidu still has a sack ability. He did use it there, so watch for the damage coming out onto Sidu here from that sacrifice there actually swap onto Smexon. Smart play here, making sure that they do damage to somebody else. Smexon just, their whole team at 20%, the beast cleave of Splice, just so strong here. Yeah, Sidu completely tapped on mana. Fab's gonna be pushing in and taking down Sidu. Splice going up one to zero in this grand finals. Playing that beast cleave so well, just such an incredible amount of damage over onto Method. Sidu just eventually running out of gas, no mana left, and that's gonna be it. So Splice will be taking game one here. The returning champions showing that they do know how to play this game still. They haven't forgotten in the past year. Uh, it was actually really interesting the way that that played out. That There, there were so many moments where uh, what the way that Method was playing, it was almost perfect. And I say almost perfect because there were a couple of times where they possibly could have gotten a kill if they'd just gotten one fear or something to land onto Botar. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to get that to happen, uh, and so they are going to be losing this first game to Splice. But, and again, well-deserved from Splice. They were playing that Beast Cleave incredibly well, and that's kind of how you have to play it, too, is you go for those burst opportunities. You get that opportunity to say, we're going to do a whole lot of damage in a very short period of time, and then we're going to back off because now we have to try and survive until we can get that 
that, that burst out again. Uh, so, yeah, any other thoughts about that game, guys? There were just so much damage going on from Swipe throughout the entire time, and it didn't seem like Method could counteract it. That was the main problem. He, he basically just had to have wings the entire game, or he couldn't heal through the damage, and eventually he went out of mana anyway. So I wasn't a fan of the pick they chose, I think. They were confident in their enhanced lock, but we already saw yesterday that Tempo Storm ran this, ran this exact same comp and ran into the same problem. So I'm curious why they thought they could do it that much better than Tempo Storm. And looking at these stats here, you can kind of see, even though uh, Method did more overall damage, it's just that timing from the Beast Cleave to be able to put out a big amount of damage in a short period of time. Even though the overall damage is lower, uh, Fabs and Swapsy just able to find those good opportunities in those moments when they can get those kills. We even saw Sidu. I think Sidu actually mostly died to his own blessing of sacrifice at that point, just the amount of damage being transferred to him. We do actually have a replay, though, that we can take a look at uh, and see exactly what did happen in the end there. Uh, you can kind of see, uh, as in a moment here, we'll see Sidu. He's actually already used that blessing of sacrifice, so that was not what ended up killing him here. He's just completely tapped on mana, tries to get out of line of sight, uh, but Fabs and both, uh, both Fabs and Botar actually come over to replay connect onto him and deal that last little bit of damage to take him down. So I, I think what we're going to see if Method wants to go with that same composition again, which it is now their map and counter comp choice, so they do have an advantage going into this next game. If they were to go with that same composition again, they would be needing to find ways to capitalize early on when they can get those extra cooldowns out of the Beast Cleave and get those early uh, windows of opportunity because the burst damage, there's only so many times that you can survive through that burst damage potential coming out from Beast Mastery uh, and the Enhancement Shaman. Uh, it's just eventually too much to actually deal with, and the healer, as we saw, completely runs out of mana. Uh, but the first choice is actually going to be method picking what map we're going to next. Do you guys have any predictions there? Do you have any ideas of where you think we might see this series go next? All right, well, um, <laughs> you first. My, my prediction would be uh, maybe a bigger map. I don't think the small maps really work too well when you're going up against that cleave composition. So Nuts needs a little bit more room. Tidu needs a little bit more room as well. Something like Tolveron will give them a bigger pillar that they can kite around, uh, try to overextend uh, Fabs as well as uh, Swapsy on those DPS classes. And I think uh, the bigger map is probably the smartest choice. Yeah, and I'm thinking that it really depends on what comp they're going to play next, right? They have the Prop Paladin on the bench. They have the Feral Druid comp on the bench. They really need to figure out what they want to run into this Blue Sea Beast Cleave before they pick the map. So they're probably going to take some time here to think about that. I want to see probably Ash Mains fall, something a little bit smaller, but not as big as Total Run. Take advantage of that Prop Pally a little bit, because I think that's what they should be coming up with next. All right, so we do have one other prediction to make here, and we're going to check in with Jackson down on the stage. Jackson, how did you feel about that first game, and where do you think we're going to go from here? Thanks, Josh. So that first game, it, it was exactly as I feared. I thought that during the blind pick, Method would go with their tried and true. However, Splice would do the same, and we would see the result that Tempo faced when they fought Splice is not only are their health bars getting shredded, you know, CD went oom at the end of the game. You don't often see a Holy Paladin go oom, but Splice is doing so much damage that it really is going to present them a problem if Method decides to stick with that enhanced Demonology Warlock and then Holy Paladin composition. So looking at the players' faces, I don't think Method is, is out of this yet. They're staying focused. They're staying in it. So I don't think that uh, they're just, you know, calling it quits just yet, but I know that Splice is here to play, and they have a really solid push moving forward. I think this next one is definitely on Method to see what they can change up to get a win. All right, yeah, Method definitely not the team to call it quits just yet. We've seen them in so many like tournaments in the past. Even uh, they've got two members of their team dead, dead, but the last guy's still alive. He's just fighting for it. Like, maybe, just maybe, hoping somehow something can happen there. So the Method, certainly, I mean, we're one game into a best of seven. There is no way they are out of this thing just yet. And they do have the advantage going into this next one. Uh, so they will be able to choose what map they want to play and also have the counter comp opportunity so if, uh, if oh, so we do have the map actually chosen now, it is going to be Dalaran Sewers, which seems like a really good map for that Beast Cleave to me. So do you guys think that maybe Method has something else in mind here, expecting for Splice to once again go with the Beast Cleave? Yeah, if we see the exact same compositions we saw last game, I think this Dalaran Sewers is going to favor Splice once again. So I think this is a bit of a tell that Method is going to sw switch it up, play something else, maybe tag in Officer Bean, maybe see some Feral Druid in this game. Yeah, that's very possible. I also think Demonology Warlock fits well with this map, though. When you're behind the pillar and you drop that Fell Lord, it's really hard for them to deal damage, really. It's, the Fell Lord just takes up the whole space for 30 seconds, and they can't really get the damage done. And that's really what was killing Method last game, was just the constant damage. So if they can split that up a bit with the Fell Lord, that could be what they're going for. But I'm really hoping I, we don't see the same composition. We've already seen it with Temple Storm against Splice, and they went down to the same thing. 
All right, well, we do have compositions locked in. Of course, it will be Splice's turn to declare what that is first. We're going to find out right now if they're going to stick with that Beast Cleave. And it looks like, yes, in fact, they will. We will have Swapsy once again on the Enhancement Shaman, Botar on the Holy Paladin, and Fabs playing that Beast Mastery Hunter. Uh, like we were saying, this map is a really, really good one to play that on. I think this is a completely straightforward pick for them. But maybe that's what Method is aiming for here. Maybe Method wants that comp again so that they can play into it. Maybe they have something that they've prepared to be able to beat this Beast Cleave on a map like, uh, like Dalaran Sewers. Uh, let's go ahead and find out as soon as that composition is locked in for Method what they've actually chosen as well. We do know they have a ton of comps available to them. Uh, ooh, and they are bringing in Officer Bean. They're going to go with c on the Holy Paladin, Smexen on the Enhancement Shaman, and guys, Bean playing Protection Paladin. Yeah, this is a matchup we saw, I believe, at opening week in this exact matchup between Method US and Splice. I think one of the biggest things that these guys are going to be changing so they can actually win this series is Sidhu is going to be playing that Avenging Crusader spec, so he's going to be able to have uh, the ability to do additional damage, push in, get aggressive with his team. Oh my goodness gracious, look at the crowd love for Method here. Get both these teams to cheer, guys, because honestly, they're playing so well so far. Yes, Nuts calling for support from the crowd, calling for his buddies out, in the, out there, and, you know, I think Bean is a good choice here. He's a good morale booster for the team. He's going to do a lot of damage to that Prop Paladin. Prop Paladins are really there for the support of the team. He's going to have a lot of additional healing, and he's going to be able to help out with that damage that they're really losing to in the first place. Yeah, and I think maybe you alluded to this a little bit already, Elliot. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you too well because this crowd is just too hype in here today. <laughs> having a little bit of trouble that's fine, hearing that's fine. my own co-casters. Can't even hear myself think everybody's so excited here. But being on that prop paladin, he tends to play as a more of a disruption spec. There's kind of two ways to take it. You can focus on healing or you can focus on disruption. We're going to find out, though. We're in game two. Splice up 1-0 versus Method. We'll see if Method's about to start staging their comeback. Yeah, we'll have to see how this goes. Both teams are sort of going to their boxes. They're not going to be pushing in right away. Uh, never mind, they're both going to be pushing in immediately. The hot going out on the CDU adaptation is going to be hot from him, so he's going to be out of that immediately. Botar actually the one that the Method's trying to focus very early on. Double hot oh. coming out, already down to 10% HP. This is going to be bubble. The Avenger Crusader comes out, but all of Method is running down as well. Yeah, Bean has pumped his wings and trying to get out that extra healing to help his team out. CDU also has his Avenger Crusader available too, so they're just doing a ton of extra healing right now. It's going to be really hard for Bob. And swap to do enough damage to force cooldowns here, and that is really why they brought me to this match to disrupt that damage. That's such a good start for Method, though. Botar immediately having to use that bubble. Once this Avenger Crusader falls, Method's going to be looking to get aggressive as well. Smexen already has that Bloodlust stuff, I believe, right now as well. So the Hodge going out onto Botar, but it's likely we see the DR Hodge coming out as well. I think Swapsy's actually throwing out some off heals now, so well done by him. Botar's not going to be taking too much damage from the swap from Method. He's trying to get away, though. He's trying to kite, but Method is on the pursuit. And without the offensive cooldowns coming from Method, though, they're going to have a tough time getting any more cooldowns from Botar. They need that Bloodlust back up. They need those wings from Bean to get that damage going. And Sidhu's going to be struggling with the healing a bit here until his Avenging Crusader is up. Meanwhile, Swapsy, though, taking his own damage, giving him 5%. There's a full hex on the Botar. Swapsy needs to dispel that immediately. He does get it. Swapsy gets top from what... I don't know. I have no idea what heal that was, but he's full now. Botar getting Swapsy, sitting at 50%. Has to bomb. Has to use his Avenging Crusader. Sidhu, meanwhile, taking a ton of damage as well, but Bean still has a lot of cooldowns to help him out. Yeah, Botar getting away into a safe position right now. Sidhu's in a little bit of trouble. Once that Avenging Crusader falls, he needs to make sure he can get away. He needs to kite, avoid some of this incoming damage, but Swapsy once again getting smoked. Botar's gonna go into the Hodge, the DR Hodge, and Method's gonna tie up this series one to one. And that drop out of pick coming up for Method, going strong here. The crowd is going absolutely crazy over this. What an incredible game coming from Method there. And the energy in the room, you can feel how excited people are for that victory. Of course, we've seen Prop Paladin played multiple ways over the course of this road to BlizzCon. We actually saw, I believe it was Wong's team that played Prop Paladin and then played the, the more healing focused spec at the Americas Regionals. And that was a really, really long game. Method said, you know what, we're gonna play Prop Paladin, but, but the reason we're picking Prop Paladin is so that we can kill you in the first two minutes. Uh, and of course, that's actually what happened there. So now Method has tied the series up one to one. Uh, Officer Bean coming in, doing yeah. some work. Making his uh, BlizzCon debut. Let's show Bean some love, playing that Protection Paladin. Like you said, normally when you see a Protection Paladin, it's a very defensive role. You try to stall out the game, last as long as possible. But Bean, he pushes in, gets aggressive, and uh, that was such an un overwhelming amount of damage coming up from Method. It was hard for Splice to deal with, but that was a close call um, on both sides. 
Yeah, let's actually break down a little bit what exactly the Prop Paladin brings to this composition. Like we were saying, he does play that disruption spec. Uh, and what we mean by that is he's using abilities like uh, there's the honor talent that causes your divine steed to knock people back. And we actually saw Botar sort of flying through the air with his wings active like some sort of giant torn cherub <laughs> ascending from the heavens down off the side of the platform. Uh, and that's the sort of stuff that Beam's going to be doing in there. What else does the, the protection Paladin, the way that Beam plays it, actually bring to this? Rodney, I'll, I'll ask you this. So he has a couple heals he can toss out to help his team out. And it's really going to help disrupt the damage that they're doing. Because at the start, usually, they get tons of cooldowns from Method. They get the bubble. They get the sacrifice. But that time, it was just the Avenging Crusader and the wings from Bean that helped them survive through it. He also has the bop, just in case they, they need an extra one. He also has... There was someone, oh, Avenger's Shield, the Silence, to help out with that extra CC chain to get Botar down. Yeah, so they get those consistent CC chains, like you said, with that Avenging Shield, that Silence that he can throw out, as well as the double Hodges. We saw them consistently. Sidu would throw in a Hodge, then Bean would follow it up with the DR Hodge, and it's just such a long stun combination for these Cleaves, for them to connect and really make, uh, do a lot of damage, get that effective pressure out. Yeah, the extra blessing and protection is a big deal as well. One thing we were saying after that first game is that the, the sort of burst opportunities that come out from the Beast Cleave every, basically every 30 seconds, uh, 30 to 45 seconds is about the, usually the timing from that Beast Cleave and when they're actually going to be able to get some damage out. Uh, and eventually you just run out of cooldowns to be able to deal with that. But adding that extra blessing and protection in there, as well as that extra stun, being able to disrupt that for just a little bit longer gives just long enough for Sidu to potentially have his cooldowns coming back up again as well. We're actually going to take a quick look at a replay of how that last match ended up happening there. And we can see uh, just the amount of damage that's about to come out onto Swapsy here. I believe there will be a stun landing on Botar. Yeah, that stun at that last second onto Botar just did not allow him. He had his Avenging Crusader active, but the way Avenging Crusader works, you have to actually be attacking people in order to get any real benefit from it. So the fact that they were able to land that, it was just a half stun onto Botar at that moment when they knew that there was about to be a ton of damage happening onto Swapsy was what, able, what was able to get them the kill there. Yeah, well, another person I want to talk about is Smexen, someone we don't talk about too often, but the consistent damage he does on live as well as in these tournaments is unbelievable. On that Enhancement Shaman, on that Warrior, just at any moment in the game, he can just smoke anyone. He gets really vocal, yells for that kill, 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 and it's just really exciting to watch him play. Yeah, there's a reason he's in every single game for this team here. He's doing such an amazing job on that Enhancement Shaman. All right, we do have Jackson down on the stage to get his input as well. Jackson, we're tied up one-to-one. -one. How are you feeling about this series? Josh, I feel like this is the sign of a champion. When you're down, your back's against the wall, you guys can come together as a team and make a victory happen. And bringing out Officer Bean was definitely the choice I think they needed to make in order to move on in this tournament. We knew the enhanced demo was gonna have problems against Beast Cleave. They wanted to give it a try in that first match. They brought out the Bean, as people have done in the past, and it worked well for them. I think that once again, it's now it is on Splice to make that adjustment to see where to move forward because Method had their number that last match. Absolutely, Method doing what they need to do to claw back into this. Of course, Splice does still have the advantage because they will be able to choose their map and composition, counter composition next. Uh, so we'll see where that ends up going. We are tied one to one in this series, this grand finals here at the Arena World Championship. We got at least three more games ahead of us, uh, but we're going to take a real short break. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back with more Arena. The World of Warcraft Arena World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. Heroes of Azeroth, I have witnessed our end. Demonic armies spilling over the horizon and on to our shores. Heed my warning, the Burning Legion has returned. Stronger, more determined than ever before, these demons seek to annihilate everything upon Azeroth. No single person can stand against the Legion alone. And so you came to me. I will deal with these intruders. Wouldn't. I 
knew we couldn't trust her! In the end, death claims us all. The Legion cannot be stopped. Our time is short. Now go. But remember, should you fail, all worlds will burn. What's in the name? Well, that depends on what you do with it. That's your name. Mm -hmm. Heroes of the Storm. Prepare for Heroes Brawl, a new game mode that breaks all the rules. Rated T for Teen. Warcraft Arena World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. There's so much energy here in this room already. They've been practicing and battling it out all year long. All their hard work is for this. Once you're there, once you're on that final stage, realizing that your team is now the best in the world, Nothing can compare. You guys definitely seem to be positioning yourselves well for a back-to-back -back BlizzCon title. Now Frosty has overstayed his welcome. Big Bird's coming in. No dispersion. Method NA will advance to the semifinals. He cannot escape. Smacks it. Method will blow him out of the water. Advancing to the grand final. Three to zero. Go Refuge survive. Jamila needs to get those CCs out. Splice is going to take this series three to one. They will be playing in the grand finals for that $120,000 first place prize, as well as the title of Arena World Champions. All right, guys, welcome back to the grand finals of the Arena World Championship at BlizzCon 2016. We are tied one to one and I could not be happier with how these games have played so far. We've seen Splice taking some awesome kills. We've seen Method taking some awesome kills. We're seeing two of the best, the current two best teams in the world of Warcraft facing off against each other. I'm just, uh, it's, it's overwhelming a little bit. I'm actually a little bit too excited about this. I may need, to, may need to calm down, take a nap after this one. It's just too hype right now. Of course, we are tied one-to-one. -one, uh, Method claiming that last map, uh, which means that the next map choice will be for Splice. Uh, and then Method will declare their composition and Splice will declare their composition. Now we've seen Splice uh, playing that Beast Cleave very well, but they've decided to go to Tolveron Arena, which tells me they're planning to change things up. Yeah, I think they are. It's going to be difficult. Uh, well, I, I think it's hard for Method to now choose uh, this composition, that uh, p Protection Paladin, that Holy Paladin, as well as that Enhancement Trauma. This map's going to be a lot bigger. But one of the things about this comp that Method's running as Splice, they don't have a lot of practice against this. This isn't a comp you traditionally see. They, they can't be that confident with their choice moving forward. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Tolveron may almost be a sort of trap pick coming from Splice here, because if Method were to go with uh, a composition that you generally would see on Tolveron, then Method can go back to the Beast Cleave, and actually, most of the, most of the time, the map it plays a factor, but it may not play a big enough factor in those situations where they're playing that Beast Leave composition if Method were to go for something like the Enhancement Demo Warlock that we saw earlier or something that particularly favors a large map. 
However, if method goes for something that uh, doesn't favor the large map, then Splice still has that sort of home court advantage in that sense, where they can, they can go basically anywhere. And both of these teams, honestly, they both have so many comps available to them that it's actually really hard to guess what they might be trying to play. Normally, we kind of go, OK, yeah, this guy plays Enhanced Shaman and, and Warrior or something. This guy plays Resto Shaman, Resto Druid. Uh, and you can kind of guess from there where they're going to go. But the way these teams have been playing, they each have so many different classes and specs that they can play. It's actually really hard to predict. Where are we even going to see this go? Yeah, I think Method's going to be picking up that enhanced prod here. You pretty much have to go for that at this point. It makes a lot of sense to continue with that composition. It'll beat other things besides Beast Cleave. It's not just the counter to Beast Cleave here. So it makes a lot of sense. For Splice, I have no idea. They have so many comp They have hidden compositions that we haven't seen yet that they've talked about. I don't want to mention what they are because they did tell me a couple <laughs> things. I don't want Method to hear that. But they do have some very big surprises in store for this Grand Finals. All right, well, we will find out here just as soon as these compositions are locked in. And they are. I have just gotten confirmation that they are locked in now. So we're going to find out what Method has chosen to play on Tolveron Arena. How are they feeling going into this next one? They're going to stick with the Prop Paladin. We're going to see Sidu once again on the Holy Paladin. Smexin on the Enhancement Shaman. And Bean coming in with the Protection Paladin. Officer Bean, Deputy Dew, and, I don't know, Sergeant Smexin, I guess, coming out here to be able to tie the whole thing together. Um, so I, you guys were kind of saying this, this kind of felt like the pick they almost needed to make on this map. Do you think Splice is going to change it up here? Uh, I, I think they have no choice. That last game was one, so one-sided. The only thing I, I would say about Splice is maybe they feel like they didn't run the opportune strategy. So we did see them actually win as Beast Cleave against this composition before. Of course, now Method switching it up a little bit, Sidu changing up his talents, using that Avenging Crusader, and that's the additional damage that they needed running this um, Protection Paladin um, class to make sure they have that damage to push forward and actually get a kill against Splice. Well, let's find out what Splice has actually locked in. Their composition has been declared as well, uh, and it looks like it will be once wow. again that Beast Cleave. That's a really, really interesting, almost a sort of ballsy choice to make <laughs> here. Swapsy coming in on the Enhancement Shaman, Botar on the Holy Paladin, and Fabs once again on the Beast Mastery Hunter. Uh, so th the only difference now between this match and the last one is the map that we're going to be playing on. Obviously, Dalaran Sewer is a very small map very close quarters. Tolveron Arena, very large, very, very uh, long distances between the pillars, and the pillars themselves are also very large. So how do you think that's going to affect their strategy going into this? Well, this really shows some confidence from Splice saying, we just lost the last match handily, but we're going to go into this next map. It's Tolveron Arena. It's a lot bigger. Botar is going to be able to kite away, make sure he's not getting silenced and hodge all over the place, because the range on those abilities is pretty short. So if he's able to stay far away, maybe play those long cooldown wings, get heals from range, he should be OK here. I think that's really what they need to do. They need to have Botar running that long cooldown wings like you were talking about. He needs to have more distance. What happened last game, he was way too close to Method. Sidu, as well as being able to get those consistent hodges out onto him, as well as that shield silence coming out from the Protection Paladin. Um, so I think if he plays a little bit more uh, far, further away, gets a little bit more distance, and just sort of plays for the long game, uh, it'll end up working better for Splice. All right, well, this game is just about to start. It's tied one to one. Method versus Splice in our grand final. Finals here. Give a cheer for these teams, guys. We're seeing some amazing games so far, and this one is going to be another one for the books. Ooh, Botar actually sticking with the Avenging Crusader. Yeah, it looks like Botar is going to get in on the action again. I wonder why he's not playing that long cooldown wings, because the match choice isn't going to really make a big difference here, because they're all going to be on top of each other going out in an all-out brawl. Yeah, maybe that we'll see a different target selection for uh, Team Splice in this game. I think Method, once again, is going to be making those swaps over onto Swap. If Botar gets aggressive, they can throw those Hodges out onto him. Get that consistent CC coming out. Uh, look for both Shamans throwing out those Hexes as well. Smexen landing Hexes onto Swap. Swap to see the landing Hexes onto Smexen. Uh, that's really going to be key to get that crowd control out. And I think Swap is actually playing Ethereal form. Good choice here to make sure he's mitigating that damage, but he's not going to be able to attack during that. So make sure he needs to make sure that when he does pop that, it's at the perfect time to make sure he's mitigating damage and able to get back on the offensive after. Yeah, Method playing nice and safe right now behind the pillar. They do not want to pull out into the open. They do not want to give Splice that map advantage like they want. It looks like Smexen's actually going to be pushing in, immediately trading some damage over onto Swapsy. Swapsy taking so much damage early on. Botar trying to throw out those heals. The hot though, going out onto Botar. Method wants to get aggressive early. Swapsy already down to 10%. The silence going out onto Botar as well as Vabs. But Swapsy's going to be able to survive this initial onslaught. Yeah, and the immediate ethereal form coming out from Swapsy. He's going back on the offensive now. Onto Bean, it looks like, or maybe the entire team 
team. Yeah, Bean's the one taking damage. He does pop his wall. He's gonna be absolutely bad. Meanwhile, Swapsy taking a ton of damage from both Bean and Smex. And really good start here from Method. Yeah, absolutely. But CD's uh, Vendor Crusader is gonna be falling here soon. But the swap over on the Botar. How is Method doing so much damage with this protection paladin? Hodge now going out onto Swapsy as well. Splice looking to turn it around, but they're hitting a protection paladin right now. Inherently tanking class it makes it very, very difficult for them to actually land a kill. Yeah, Splice having a hard time finding their target here. They're going for Bean. They're not sure if they should go for Smex and Bean or Sidu, but they are going to go on to Bean here, trying to get damage up, but it's not working. Bean consistently sitting above half HP while Swapsy and Botar are constantly under pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Botar having no more defensive cooldowns left. He needs to hold on a little bit longer for that Avenger Crusader coming up in 10 seconds. Sidu, on the other hand, having every single cooldown available to him. Method in a very good position early on, but this damage coming out from Splice could be scary. The Hodge going out on the Swapsy down to 10%. He's going to go down. Method doing an unbelievable amount of damage. The silence over on the Botar was that Hodge was enough to finish him off. And that game, that is huge for Method. That is a huge victory for Method there. They have reclaimed the series lead, which means that now on every game, they only have to win on their own map and comp choice. So they will have the comp advantage going into That was what Method needed to be able to claw themselves back into this. They've turned it around, guys. They're now up two to one versus Splice. Splice, a team of legends. These people have been playing for so long. They're so good at this game. And you're gonna hear the crowd chanting right now. We can tell who they're into, who they're who they're cheering for. It's such a good story too. Like Sidu obviously coming back for his fourth BlizzCon, really looking for that victory. If you're Splice at this point, where do you go from here? Splice has to be worried now. They ran their best composition, the unbeatable Beast Cleave, and they have found the counter. Method has found that prop out, and Officer Bean coming in strong. And now they have to wonder what they're going to next. They have a few surprise compositions, but that was their bread and butter. That was their go-to. What are they going to do? Yeah, they do have a lot of other compositions practiced, uh, but we haven't seen them really run it. We've only seen them play this Beast Cleave, play that Ret Enhance, or sorry, that Ret Rogue um, Druid as well. So those are the two comps we've seen out of Splice, but we know they have a lot of different compositions and classes available, but what do you do against Method? Uh, there's no way they could have been practiced against this composition. I honestly cannot believe the amount of damage with that yeah. Protection Paladin coming out from Method. It's just It's like some of the fastest games we've seen so far. Well, yeah, we were actually looking at the damage uh, on the score screen there just a second ago, and it's really interesting Bean did, he did a fair amount of damage, but the vast majority of the damage was actually coming from Smexen. Uh, he's known for playing Warrior. He has sort of had the, the sort of the Smexecute is sort of his, uh, his tagline. He's apparently showing that even if he's not playing Warrior, he still has the Smexecute ability in his spellbook, the ability to just pump out a ridiculous amount of damage. Let's take a look at the replay of what we saw at the end of that game there. Uh, just get a glimpse of just how much damage was actually coming out. Swapsy, of course, the one to keep an eye on here. Look, he's already at full health. He's actually looking completely fine, but we're going to see a stun land onto Swapsy in just a second. The silence coming out onto Botar, and it's just too much damage. Even though Botar gets out of that silence, Swapsy still falls due to the sheer amount of damage that Smexen, in conjunction with Bean on the Prop Paladin, was able to put out. Yeah, and they, ki they killed him in one Avenger shield. That's an incredible amount of damage. Um, obviously, Botar did have that Avenging, uh, sorry, that Avenging Crusader, that specialization. He didn't get too much use out of it. I think if Splice wants to continue to run that Beast League, he needs to swap his specialization. He needs to play further back, get that consistent healing out, as well as have those additional cooldowns. Yeah, and Sidu and Bean are both playing that short cooldown Hodge. So every 30 seconds, they're going for a kill on this team, and it's working out so well for them. I believe Swapsy had his ethereal form. We don't have it shown on the UI currently, which is a problem, but. Every 45 seconds, he has an ability to mitigate all melee damage incoming, and he had it up, but he was hodge, so he couldn't break out of it, and he didn't have a trinket, so maybe they're going to start playing adaptation, start using some more of these stun breaks, because that game looked horrible for them, and I think they have to swap their comp because of it. Yeah, I think Splice definitely finding themselves in a position where they need something to get them through this. They need to find some opportunity. Maybe what they need is a little bit of flex, so we're going to go down to Jackson on the stage and check in with Bajira. Dude, how are you feeling about this? Hey, Josh, I'm feeling good. The crowd certainly seems to be feeling good, and I know Method's got to be feeling good, taking the 2-1 lead in this series. So Method, they seem to be on the path. They're exactly where they want to be. They got themselves to the finals. They went down in that first game, but made the adjustment that was needed, and now they find themselves in an advantageous position. Splice, being the tournament veterans they are, tried their comp once again, Beast Cleave. They're tried and true, and it didn't work out. Once again, keep in mind that the only team to draw blood versus Splice's Beast Cleave is Method, playing with the Prot Paladin. So they've got to have some answer, Splice does, to Officer Bean, or else they're going to be you know, punching their ticket home. Back to you, Josh.
All right, thanks so much. Yeah, and what a long trip home it will be for them, uh, that trip back to Europe. Uh, of course, if they go back with a trophy, that feels pretty good. If you go back with your measly $50,000, that might not feel quite so good. Uh, we do, I believe, have our map choice locked in now from Team Splice, where we're going next. And they're going to go to Ashermain's Fall. Okay, so I actually really like this choice. The first game that they won was on Nagrand Arena. Ashermain's Fall, very similar to Nagrand Arena. So they're kind of just saying at this point, all right, we lost on the small map. We lost on the big map. Let's stop worrying about map entirely. We'll go to Ashmane's Fall, which is just a very well-balanced, well-rounded map, much like the Grand Arena. And that's going to allow them to say, now we're just worried about composition. Yeah, absolutely. This map, I, I honestly don't feel like any map is going to give them too much of an advantage, especially with the way Method is playing. They're playing as a very cohesive unit, using that pillar to their advantage when they can, pushing in as a group with that Avenging Crusader. Uh, when those cooldowns are up, when it's not, they can pull back, play defensive, and really sort of nullify any map advantage that Splice might have. Yeah, and so we will be getting our compositions locked in here very shortly. Uh, Rodney, do you think they're going to stick with the Beast Cleave, or do, you th or do you think they're trying to stick with the Beast Cleave? Obviously, it's going to be Method's pick next. Do we think Method's going to stick with the Protection Paladin? I kind of think they should. It's clearly working for them. And if they do, do you think we're going to see the Beast Cleave once again coming out of Splice? Yeah, Method's definitely going to be locking in that Prop Paladin once again. I'm thinking we might actually see the Beast Cleave once again. They picked Tovaron, and then they followed up with Ashman's, which are two very similar maps. So they must have a plan, but they also have the Ret Rogue on deck. I know they have some other hidden compositions that we haven't seen. I mean, this is the time to bring them out right now here on the final stage. Do you think we could actually... This would be hilarious. Do you think we could actually see them going Ret Rogue into Prot? Uh, Holy Paladin with that enhancement. Are we going to see four Paladins in one arena game? Do you think that's actually a possibility? Or are the, is, is that just absolutely crazy? Am I just going nuts over here right now? I'd be very scared if I was Fabs playing an Assassination Rogue against two Paladins. They're going to have an overwhelming amount of Blessing of Protections to nullify that Vendetta, that Vendetta cooldown. That really is the key for an Assassination Rogue to land kills in this game. So I think it's unlikely we'll see that. All right, so we do have compositions locked in at this point. We're going to head down and find out what method has actually chosen. Remember, they did win the previous game, so they have to declare their composition first. And once again, Officer Bean bringing up the Protection Paladin, Smexen on the Enhancement Shaman, Sidu on the Holy Paladin. They've been doing work with this composition. I think it makes perfect sense to stick with what's working and just try and close this out. Yeah, Bean once again coming in clutch with that Protection Paladin, just playing in a style, like stylistically Bean is playing a Protection Paladin like you wouldn't expect, like we've been talking about, just doing an overwhelming amount of damage with Smex and on that Enhancement Shaman, Sidu getting aggressive as well with that Avenger Crusader. When they have those cooldowns up, when they have those consistent CC chains, those Hodges into the Avenger Shield, uh, they get crazy, they get aggressive, and it's really hard for Splice. Yeah, so we will now find out what Splice has locked in. They are down 2-1 to one in this series. Uh, it is a best of seven, so they do still have a couple games they can lose, or one game they can lose here, and they're going to go with the Beast Mastery Hunter, Enhancement Shaman, uh, and actually swapping to Restoration Druid for Botar. We've been seeing most healers actually playing uh, Holy Paladin just because of the, the number of cooldowns, especially in patch 7.0, the number of uh, ways that they were able to deal with the incoming damage. They've, def they've obviously decided they need to swap something up, They've decided to stick with the Enhancement Shaman and the Beast Mastery Hunter and actually swap out Botar onto that Restoration Druid. How do you feel about that change? You know, I want to see more of a comp swap here. I don't think just changing the healer is going to be enough for Splice here. They, they weren't able to even get close to a kill. That was the main problem to me last time, so I'm surprised they're just saying, okay, we'll swap our healer. Things will be fine. I don't think it will be fine. I think they're going to have a lot of trouble with this comp. So the big thing, of course, we were talking about it after the last game, is that Smexen, just his ability to do a ton of damage at the opportune moment, is basically the way that the, the last couple of games have gone, is that Sidu and Bean almost set up Smexen for a little bit of an alley-oop. Smexen comes in and gets himself the kill right at that point. So do you think that maybe the swap to the Druid is so that Botar can maybe land a clutch Cyclone at a, an important time, maybe stop Smexen being able to put out that damage. Uh, I don't know, we're, I guess we're about to find out. The game's about to get underway. We've got Method up 2-1 versus Splice in the grand finals here at BlizzCon 2016. I have a lot of faith in Botar on that Restoration Druid. That is his main cl uh, class. I think he's going to have to play very safe, throw out those hots, making sure he gets out those clutch Cyclones. If he can do that, if he can get out those Cyclones, they can easily win this game. If Method is able to shut that down, uh, that's going to be key to their, their, them winning.
Yeah, this game is completely on Botar. It depends on his positioning. If he's in there in the melee, he's not going to be able to get those important Cyclones out to stop the enemy team. But if he's able to keep at range, get those Cyclones out, and pull black and get his heals out. But no, he gets Hodge immediately. Another Hodge coming out on the swap team. Meanwhile, damage actually coming out on the Smexin mostly. It looks like they're going for him this game. They found their target that they want to go for. Yeah, that Iron Bark is going to nullify the opener from Method. Swaps is going to be completely fine. But now Fob's getting attacked. Down to 50% HP. Sidu taking a lot of damage as well. Down to 10% already. Avenger Crusaders not going to be enough. The bubble coming up from Sidu immediately. Smexin also in the crossfire. Sidu needs to get those heals out onto him. Avenger Crusader is going to be falling very, very soon. Meanwhile, Method getting the Hodge over on the Botar. Swapsy needs to be able to get healed up right now. He needs to keep that pressure, that momentum going. Yeah, and the entire team of Method actually sitting in a dire hawk for that entire duration took a ton of damage from that unnecessarily. Smexin sitting at 20% HP. No cooldowns. Left. Cyclone coming out from Botar. Huge play there. They need to get a CC going onto Sidu to get things followed up. He can get in there and get that. No, Sidu lands a huge heal on the Smexin to save his life, but Sidu is quickly running out of cooldowns. Yeah, Bean also able to throw in those heals. The full Cyclone, though, going out onto Bean. Botar doing such an incredible job with those Cyclones so far. Sidu needs to hold on a little bit longer for that Avenging Crusader. One more second. If he can get that up and he can get that damage out, he should be able to keep his team alive. The shield going out onto Botar as well, but he's going to nullify it. Once again, that damage coming in from Method. The Iron Bark goes up. Now Botar being swapped to. They need to get away. But Sidu getting swapped to as well. Damage coming out for both teams all over the place. And a clutch pop coming out from Bean onto Sidu to save his life. He had no more cooldowns left. There's another Lutz coming out. Botar taking some of the damage. They found their target that they want now. Barkstein comes out from him. He's actually taking way too much damage from the handle right now. He's trying to get away in cap form. This is what he needs to do. He needs to be kiting away. Stop some of the damage and get Cyclones out when his team calls for it. Yeah, that was a clutch dash coming out from Botar, making sure he could kite in cap form. But now he needs to recover on healing a little bit. Get those heals over onto Swapsy. Botar, of course, not going to have that Iron Bark in 20, for 20 seconds. That's a pivotal part of them surviving. The Hodge, though, going out onto Botar. Now Swapsy could be in a lot of trouble. Method trying to get aggressive. The double Hodge coming out once again. But Botar able to easily heal through this damage so far. Yeah, the Hodge from Botar really helping Swapsy out. They know he's a target, so they're just keeping him alive with those Hots and then using the empowerments to keep him alive right after. There's the wings from Bean, but he gets immediately cycled. Botar really telling the tale of this game so far with that Druid. Yeah, right now we can see the clear mana advantage going on for Sidu. Botar already down to 50% mana, but I don't know if that's going to matter. The Hodge going out onto Botar. Swapsy could be in some trouble. Looks like Splice wants to get aggressive onto Sidu as well, but Sidu should be fine with that Avenger Crusader. He needs to be careful. He doesn't overstay his welcome, though. He needs to be able to get away once that cooldown fades, or he might actually end up going down. Yeah, the offensive cooldowns for Method are all down. Now. All their damage is pretty much wiped out. Let's Smexin can get some procs on the Swapsy. Sidu having to run away right now. He's waiting for that Avenging Crusader to come back up, but it looks like both teams are going to be absolutely fine right now. Botar gets in a hot. He does use double Barkskin there to stay alive, but he's actually the one under fire. Smexin and Bean have found Botar, and they need to stick on him if they want to win this game. Yeah, Botar doing a great job with that bear form. Now, now Smexin's in a little bit of trouble. The clone going out onto Smexin. If they can get any follow-up CC onto Sidu, Smexin could go down here. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Sidu trying to throw out as many heals as possible. He's caught in the crossfire, though. It looks like Splice wants to swap over onto him. Avenger Crusader's going to be up, though. This is the pressure that they need. Hodge going out onto Botar. DR Hodge as well. Swapsy taking a little bit of damage. No Iron Bark available for Botar. Is he going to be able to keep Swapsy up? It looks like it, but Sidu needs to be careful, too. He's taking quite a bit of damage. The Bloodlust coming up from Smexin. Swapsy down to 10%. Botar needs to be able to heal through this. The Avenging Shield coming out from being onto Botar. He's going to be able to silence him up, but Sidu in a lot of trouble. Does not have that bubble available for another two minutes. Avenger Crusader is going to fall very soon. Bags in the meantime, also very low. Botar does have that Iron Bark available. Sidu is going to be using that Divine Seed to get away to safety. Yeah, Sidu is able to get huge shields out here. Should be able to top his team. Wings coming up soon for Bean, and they're going to be able to get some damage out. Hodge was out in the Botar, but it's not enough. They need to get more damage going out in the swap. There's a huge Hodge coming out of him. A silence on the Botar. They're not going to be able to get. Oh, they're doing a ton of damage. All of a sudden, Smexy goes wild. Sitting at 5% HP. Swap, he's trying to win. He does not have a theory for but Iron Bark comes out from Botar to save him right at the last second. Yeah, Botar doing work on that restoration drew. That Iron Bark paying dividends right now, keeping his team up when Method wants to get aggressive. Now Splice needs to look for some counter pressure here. The Hodge, though, going out on the Botar. Swapsy now in a lot of trouble. He does have that heroism up, so he can counter pressure if he wants to. Botar not in any more CC, trying to throw out those heals. Looks like Swapsy's HP is stabilized. The full hex going out on his Mexican. Well done by Swapsy. Cyclone going out on the Bean. Nice CC coming out from Splice as they're trying to take down Sidu. And even though they land the hex on Smexin, they immediately break it. He's really the only target for them to attack. So it's hard to get CC chains going for them because Smexin can decarse them. Meanwhile, Swapsy taking a ton of damage. They're all over him this game. There's the Hodge on the Botar. The Hodge on the Swapsy. This can be huge for them. He has a Ethereal form up though, and he's able to survive completely through it.
Yeah, uh, Smexen actually throwing out that Hex on the Botar. Swapsy doing a good job quickly decursing that, so he's going to get his healer out of that CC. Dampening has just kicked in. We are at 1% dampening now as this game goes further and further on. It's going to be harder for these heals to deal with all this incoming damage. Botar getting shocked up there by Smexen. Well done interrupting that CC, but the Cyclone's going to go out onto Bean. Smexen now looks like the target of choice for Splice. Splice trying to push in. They want to get aggressive. Seed is going to be answering that aggression with that Avenging Crusader. Bubble up for him in 10 seconds as well, so Method has held on as long as they need to. He's going to be able to top his team here. Dampening, starting kicking, like you said. Big swap on his swap with a double hodge again. But again, Botar answering with his cooldowns like over and over. That Iron Bark really coming to play. That Resto Druid, a huge factor in this game. Getting Cyclones out, getting Bashes out, doing a great job on that Resto Druid. Yeah, Botar coming in clutch, like we said. The Cyclone going out onto Bean. DR Cyclone as well. Smex in a little bit of trouble. DR Cyclone going out onto Sidu. He does have that bubble. He will be able to fall back on that if he needs to. The Silence going out onto Botar. Swapsy now using that Ethereal form to immune some of that incoming damage. That's a very low cooldown, consistent defensive cooldowns as keeping Swapsy up. And there's the Hodge on the Botar again. He has answers. He has the Bark Stand. He's able to get away here. He, there's a Silence on him. He's just trying to get a distance. That's all he needs. But there's a DR Hodge from Sidu. Sidu's not going to be able to solo him here. Thankfully, Holy Paladins aren't that strong. Smexen taking a ton of damage as well. Full Cyclone on the Sidu. He has his wall, so he's going to be able to survive through it. Avenging Crusader coming up for Sidu in just a second. Yeah, nice to see coming out of Botar. That bash on the Sidu into that Cyclone, procking that adaptation cooldown. Swapsy still in a little trouble. No Iron Bark available. The DR Hodge coming up from Botar. A little bit of a blunder coming up from Method with that triple DR. DR Hodge, they needed to be a little bit more patient. If they were, they might have been able to take down Swapsy. And now Botar has his Iron Bark up next CC chain. He should be absolutely fine. There it is. But maybe Smexen can just kill him through it. He's going hard on him. He pops his Ethereal form. Is it going to be enough to survive here? Swapsy cannot attack while it's active, so he's just letting the pressure ride. Smexen actually taking a ton of damage from Bob by himself right now, sitting at half HP. c does not have any cooldowns to help him out. Yeah, he does not. Avenging Crusader up for him in 30 seconds, but Smexen now in a lot of trouble. So you might actually have to use that bubble to throw out those heals. He's in a very strategic position right now. He's far away. He's able to get out those heals, keep himself up, but Splice has so much momentum in their favor right now. Bean's going to have to throw out those heals as well if he wants to stabilize his team. And the kill window for Method is fading here. The Iron Bark's going to be up in 20 seconds, and they need to get some damage out on the swap. So they're going to have their double hodge coming up, but Smexen and Sidu and Bean are all sitting low. Smexen does not have his wall. If Botar can get a Cyclone on the Sidu right now, it could be huge. Could force that bubble. His Avenging Crusader is up now, though. He's able to break out of that CC, and he's going to be able to top his team here. Yeah, the full Cyclone going on a Sidu. Adaptation going to be proccing that as well, so Sidu's not going to have a CC break for quite some time. Swapsy taking a lot of damage. Smexen as well needs to be careful. Can't Sidu keep him up? Smexen down to 10% HP. Swapsy and Fab's going crazy right now. Sidu just doing everything he can to keep them up. The Divine Favor, Holy Light coming out. Going to be connecting a huge heal onto Smexen. The full Cyclone, though, going out onto Smexen. Sidu now needs to run away. Swapsy swapping over onto him. Sidu might actually have to use his bubble here, and he does. And there is an Ethereal form and Iron Bark. Things are looking good for Splice here in the late dampening. There's some Bloodlust coming out from Swapsy. They're going to go hard on the Smexen. He does have his wall available. Both Shamans using Bloodlust, trying to go for their final hurrah here. Smexen sitting at half, though. They're the ones taking the brunt of the damage. Yeah, Botar, of course, can always fall back, fall back on that Iron Bark cooldown. It's been so powerful in this matchup so far. Swapsy using that Ethereal form, so he's not going to have that available for some time. But if you look at Sidu's cooldowns, he really doesn't have too much. That Avenger Crusader is going to have to carry him through for quite some time. And they just have one bot from Bean to save him for a second, but it can just get purged by Swapsy. Smexen taking a ton of damage. Bean's going to come out of that and go, go for a couple extra heals. The Avenging Crusader out from Seated, but he's bashed. Smexen taking a ton of damage here. They don't even need cooldown skill at this point. There's no healing coming out. Dampening is kicking in, but Bean pops his wings. They're going to try to get some damage out here. Yeah, now Method looking to get aggressive, doing some damage over on the fans, but Seed is going to get swapped to, taken down. Bubble still not up for five minutes. Splice coming in clutch with that restoration, that comp swap, tying up the series two to two. And could we ask for anything better in a grand finals than to be tied two to two at this point? Both of these teams just playing their hearts out, going like crazy. Splice now tying the series up two to two. They're trying to claw their way back into this after Method comes out with that prop Paladin. Now Splice may have found the answer to that. That great play from Botar there on that restaurant. He really carried that game. He got the Cyclones out. He got the batches he needed. He got the positioning he needed. He stayed so far away. They had to run over there so far to get the Hodges. And you have to wonder, sitting in their shoes, though, are they going to stick with that same comp? Because they know Restaurators are weak against other things. And that's why they haven't been played as much in this tournament so far. Yeah, Method winning two games in a row, though, that does mean that they do have the advantage if this goes to a best of seven. They only have to win on their composition and their map choice. That's a huge advantage in a series like this. So Method might be able to switch 
switch up their composition and deal with that Resto Druid coming out from Botar. Yeah, that's an extremely good point. Now Splice, if they want to go with that Resto Druid again, Method will have the opportunity to counter comp into that, meaning that Method will know that the, the, the Resto Druid uh, uh, Beast Mastery Hunter Enhancement Shaman, uh, if Splice were to go with that again, would already be locked in at that point. And then Method, like you say, there's a lot of different ways to counter that Restoration Druid. It obviously worked pretty well against the Prop Paladin Enhancement Shaman Holy Paladin composition, uh, but Method has so many different comps available to them that they could easily play back into that. That's why we were saying earlier that that, that game that they won, uh, where they, they brought it back into it, uh, was so important for, for Method when they won on Splice's map pick. We do have a replay that we can take a look at here uh, and get a look at the last and final moments of that game. I actually want to see what happened to Sidu there. He died so quickly uh, that I, it actually didn't even occur to me that he was taking damage before he actually died. So we can see he does have that fully Avenger active at the moment. That's going to fade. Uh, does not have his uh, cooldown available. I guess actually that was a, a bit from the earlier part of the game. Now we're starting to get to the point where he's already used that Divine Shield. Uh, he's got his Avenging Crusader active. He's actually still got it active at this point. Uh, it's just too much damage coming out from Splice for him to be able to deal with it. Yeah, that first replay we saw Swatsy actually dipping down to around 3% HP. So you, that just says how close that game really was, very back and forth throughout the entire game. Now, as Method, do you stick with what you know? I mean, obviously, they're going to know that Botar is going to be able to run that Restoration Druid. Can they fall back on the Enhancement Shaman and that Demonology Warlock? Now, all of a sudden, you don't have that Avenging Crusader Paladin as Botar is going to be doing that additional damage. So maybe that's what they need to survive, and they can actually run back their, to their bread and butter, that composition that they've been running so well. Yeah, I'm going to step back a few weeks here because we had our regional event, and it was... Method versus the Australian team. And the Australian team was running a Resto Shaman, and they decided to run Enhancement Shaman Assassination Rogue into that. And with that composition, they were able to kill a Shaman in 10 seconds. The game was over immediately. So I would not be surprised if they're not running the Paladin that that comp will come out. Yeah, I think we actually called that one Deletion Cleave. Yes, we <laughs> did. the name of that composition, because that's essentially what they tried to do. And they, that's what they did, was just delete somebody on the other team. Um, we are going to take a really quick break before we get into game five here in the finals. Uh, we're going to have Jared, Asid, and Adrian coming up to cast the final games of this series as well. So give it up for these teams, guys. Give it up for our upcoming casters. This is an amazing grand final. Stick around, we'll be right back. Warcraft Arena World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. Everything that I do in my life is working towards getting on to the big stage of video gaming. I don't want to get second place this year. Like, I'm, I'm going for first. I won't be happy unless we win. My name is Andrew Rodriguez, and I go to University of Texas at Arlington. Daniel Lee and I go to University of Connecticut. My name is David Young, and I go to school at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. My name is Michael Udall, and I go to ASU. Heroes of the Dorm is an amateur tournament focused on college teams, playing not for prize money, but for tuition. This is my first year competing in Heroes of the Dorm. Gaming at first was just a hobby, but now it's kind of evolved into part of my life. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona. Gaming was definitely frowned upon. I would think, gee, what a waste of time. You guys ought to be studying algebra or anything worthwhile. My parents used to hate when I played, but now they're like, this is so cool, you're going to Seattle for playing a video game. Hello and welcome to the Heroes of the Dorm Heroic Four. Here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, four college teams have come to battle it out. We started over a month ago, and now we have Tennessee, UT Arlington, UConn, and Arizona State. We all felt really good after the win, but we came here to win the whole thing, so the work's not over yet. You don't reach that level without the dedication and the focus and the endless hours honing your craft. It's going to take a determination and discipline, just like succeeding in anything in life. It's just, it's intense, that's the best way to put it. Until you play the game and try to excel at it, you just, you have no idea. 
an outlet like that where students come together and, and share the same interests. That's what it's all about. This was the future of esports that we imagined. Take a look, MG blows up in a matter of seconds. Shot low on HP, but the boy with the oh, They are going for the core. They're going to be able to save it in time. And it goes down. GG. The World of Warcraft Arena World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. Welcome back, everyone. This is game number five. How did it come down to this in this series? This is incredible. We were standing by watching so many intelligent honor talent choices, the map picks, the strategies, the ethereal forms at 1% health. Oh, what a series. It's so amazing to see what these teams have been able to come up with. We see the mechanics of the game Legion. We have the prop paladin, of course, being the kind of mean, lean, bean machine on that prop paladin, bringing them back from that 1-0 defeat down to 2-2. Two to two. And now we basically have a best of three with everything on the line for the entire year of World of Warcraft Arena. I don't think we could have asked for a better final than this. We're tied 2-2 two to two between Method NA and Splice. I'm absolutely floored by this. It's an amazing stage, an amazing audience, and amazing players lined up for this series. I can't wait to get this underway. I just don't know what to expect. These teams are bringing the heat. I heard we're going to hear an interesting map pick out of this next match. So we'll have to take a look at what map they are going to pick. Of course, it's extremely important. This is almost a reset series, but there you go. Haven't seen much out of this map just yet, but you know this means it's going to be a fast match. Yeah, well, this is a best of seven, of course, so we can expect to see seven out of eight of those maps. This is Method's choice. Going for that smaller map, they need something to counteract this rest of Madrid. Botar splicing things up a little bit, bringing out that pick instead of the Holy Paladin. It's going to be interesting to see whether they're able to punish that aggressive healer on this smaller map. I mean, if you're a Splice fan, you must have had a heart attack after that last series. Swapsy was below 5% at least six or seven times in that last match. They, they were so close to losing. Method and A are definitely not out of this. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be very... Uh, there's so much on the line in this competition. It's like, you can't really amount it. You have Sidhu on his last chance at BlizzCon in the grand final, two games away from winning the entire thing. On the other side, you have Splice. They are one... Well, basically one series, two, one best of three away from getting the second consecutive BlizzCon win. No one has ever done that in their history. And the thing is, they're doing it as three people in a four-man roster competition. And yes, they are. All right, what, how do you think this series is going to play uh, this next map in terms of comps now that we've seen uh, this map? It's going to be very interesting to see what is picked by Splice, whether they go for that Restoration Dread. One thing Sid and I were talking about a little bit is, of course, the Restoration Dread, it is slightly more exposed than the Holy Pardon. You don't have the same number of defensive cooldowns. So maybe against the Demo LSD that we've already seen so successful from Method, it will be able to perhaps take it down a little bit easier, especially on the smaller map. So I'm wondering if they're going to go for that rest of Druid or if they're going to swap back to the Paladin. I think All they right. need to break out Snuts, 100%. Well, we'll have to see. All right, the comps are in. Let's take a look at what Splice is going to play on this Black Rick Hold. We'll have to see if there's going to be a healer swap. And there we go. Yep, it's locked in the exact same composition. There's no reason to change what is not broken. It worked for them in the last game. Now the onus is on Method to prove to us that they have a composition that can take down this rest of Druid punish Botar for this offensive pick. Yep, so Splice have locked in the Resto Druid Beast Cleave. Botar won BlizzCon on Resto Druid last year, so this is his best class, his best specialization that he is known for. It's awesome to see him be able to play that and showcase it here at the BlizzCon stage. Yep, going back to his roots, as we said, Botar on that Restoration Druid, Sopsy on the Enhancement. That was the same oh. reason we saw last time. Now we have Method. They're going to lock in. We'll see. It is the Enhanced Protection Holy Paladin. They're going to give in another shot on the smaller map. With this smaller map, do you think they actually chase the Restoration Druid a little bit more? 
I think they could be much more aggressive. Method NA played that last match a little bit more textbook. They didn't do any risky plays. Now I think that they realize, okay, we're actually really tanky. We can probably afford to run at Botar, pressure him a little bit more. So I think Botar is going to be stressed out in this next match. Yeah, and this is one of those compositions where if Bean can hit Botar, he gives the additional damage to Swapsy, uh, to Smexon, sorry. It's a 20% damage increase for all his partners when he is able to get that debuff up. So if Bean can be the kind of the key to this game, if he can connect, if he can get the damage onto Botar and enable Smexon to do the kind of whole Smex connects, kills him instantly with the Bloodlust, that's going to be the win condition for Method. That's what we're going to be watching. Yep, and Bean really is the man to watch. He is the one that's going to be setting up the plays. He has silence, he has a knockback, he has a stun, he has tons of heals. So he's really going to dictate the pace of the match for Method. I mean, Prop Paladin just suits Bean so well in this matchup. He's the morale booster for his team. He carries him on the back line, but now he's carrying him on the stage. We haven't seen a lot from him throughout BlizzCon, but now he might just take the championship himself. Yeah, I'm so happy to see that these guys are putting faith in their new kind of rookies to the team. We have Smex and Bean. You talk about them as if they're the most experienced people ever because we've known them for such a long time. But this is their first BlizzCon. Both of them, we have Snuts, kind of the most experienced person in the world at World of Warcraft Arena. Five BlizzCons on his belt and he's sitting on the bench. He has the faith in his team despite that last loss to take this series. Oh, I think we're about to be jumping into the match here very shortly. There's Botar from Splice. Let's see what he can get done. And of course, Sidu from Method NA. Let's get this thing underway. Yeah, they both the healers have been doing such a good job. We've had such long games. We even reached dampening in the last one. Can Sidu do it choices. again? Can he get it? Three adaptations on the team of uh, Method. I guess they're really afraid of that bash coming out from Botar. They want to get out of that stun as much as possible. Method NA have taken a full defensive position starting this game in the room. They want to bait Splice into their clutches. Fabio sending his army of pets in, trying to get some early pressure here over onto Smex, and we really need to pay attention to that bloodlust wombo combo from both of these shamans. Yeah, I, I actually really like the choice from that, that they realize there's not much Whoa. on the side of, not much CC on the side of the beast and they, they're one of the things they've really adapted to is they're using the stuns at the same time. They always put a stun onto Botar and a stun onto Fabio or Swapsy, whoever they killed our getters, to ensure that they cannot use defensive corners. We see the bloodlust now coming out of Swapsy. He's trying to get damage onto Smex and instantly answered by the ancestral ship. Sidu also popping the wings, but he gets caught up in a cyclone. Smexy could be in a little bit of trouble here. He needs to be careful. He drops so, so low. 30% of the cyclone and the, the ball storm coming up. But they're going to be okay. Bean and Sidu out of CC, able to heal him up. Yep, Smexon should be able to recover here. It seems like they want to go after Fabio, knocking Botar away. Fabio down to half HP. Smexon desperately trying to connect now. Burst DM down below half. Silence onto Botar. Needs to get those heals going. Trades out his iron bark. Fabio will be okay. Fabio and Swapsy now turning the pressure over onto Sidu. Sidu getting a nice big heal there, topping himself off. And now getting cloned. His adaptation has triggered. Smexon still dipping low. Swapsy and Smexon going at each other one on one. Who's going to fall first? Swapsy down to 30%. Astral Shift is not available. He's down below 50. He drops the Counter Strike to try and reverse the pressure. Bean's ready for it. Trades out some defensive cooldowns. Now Smexon, though, is dipping dangerously low below half, trying to reconnect. These shamans are just going crazy at each other. Yep, Sidu with his Avenging Crusader should be able to top off Smexon for now, but we see Swapsy. He's still not topped off. There's the Sans onto Botar. Can they follow it up with the Sun? You can see Smexon and Bean are both chasing after him. They want to get the Hodge, they want to go for that bug skin, try to get the call, but at the same time, Bloodlust popped by Swapsy, he wants to be offensive right now, Bean dropping low, oh, Smexon in. caught up into the full bash, onto his Bloodlust, unable to do damage right now, he gets Cyclone low, beautiful plays from Botar, he's been on point with these Cyclones this game. Yeah, these Cyclones have been phenomenal, Sidu, he must be sweating right now, he needs to get his heals going, his team is getting lower and lower, Smexon retreating back into the room, will he be able to line his side in time, down to 10% HP, Sidu needs to pull off a miracle, he needs to get some cast of heals going, so far Bean and Sidu supporting Smexon, now moving out, trying to start an offensive push. Botar getting silenced. Smexon trying to get some momentum on Swapsy, but he's just not getting the damage he needs right now. He's forced to run away. Sidu and Smexon are hiding for their tournament lives. And Sidu, he did such a good job of holding onto his coins that easily he could have used the sacrifice, but he was able to hold onto it. He's going to have that available for now, where we see the damage coming in if he needs to use it, but the Avenging Crusader comes up now. We need Method to get offensive onto Swapsy. Can they get the double stuns? It's been a while. Botar max ranging. He puts the preemptive iron back on the stun. Beautiful play, able to bear form as well. No one can take damage on Splice when Botar's playing this well. Yep, Swapsy looking for his Bloodlust combo with Fabio. Some burst coming out to Smexon. He deflects that pretty easily so far. Now Smexon trading out his Bloodlust. Fabio getting bursted down below half. Botar sees it coming. He's trying to deflect it, but he gets wind sheared on his heel. He's going to have to wait a couple seconds here to top off Fabio. Fabio recovering now. Hex on Smexon's going to break immediately. I really like Method and Ace positioning here. They're always pulling back to the room. Line is setting that incoming Hunter damage, avoiding some of the Cyclones from Botar. 
Shaman as well. I think they're trying to bait Botar into the room here. Smexon though is under pressure. Swapsy as well. Both Shamans just under fire. Botar caught in a stun right now. Let's see who goes down. Fabio now stunned up. Silence onto Botar. Nice stun combination. Fabio down below 50. He still has Aspect of the Turtle to save himself. He should be alright to push in here. Swapsy doesn't want a line of sight though. Splice do not want to throw the game here. Swapsy pushing in. Smexon down to half. Bean down to half. See who's got that Avenging Crusader up. It's doing so much healing. I like that he's attacking the pets. That's allowing him to heal his team back in the back line. Yeah, they're doing actually a really good job this game of punishing Fabio on that old class. They're really trying to get onto him. If they can combine the stuns, of course, there's only Relentless on the side of Splice. Ooh. They can definitely kill him in the stun. We see the Hodge now to Botar. They're doing swap over to him. They're going to force the Barkskin here. That's important because now Barkskin will not be available for an entire minute. Botar having to retreat, going to top himself, but he will not have that defensive core line. If Method can get one more stun onto Botar in the next 45 seconds or so, it could easily be the game. Yeah, Method NA's game plan is to bait Botar into the room, stun him up, and burst him down. If Botar falls for the bait, he could easily lose this match. He's moving in. He's looking for some Cyclones. He Cyclones up Bean. Are they going to push in with this is the question. Fabio's a little bit reluctant. Swapsy doesn't want to go in either. They don't want to lose here. Botar pre-hotting his team. He's getting ready for the push. Bean and Smexon, they're getting primed. Bloodlust is available uh, for Smexon. He'd love to get going. Let's see if they can reconnect. Smexon wants to push out, but they're just taking so much pressure. Sidu's running out of mana. I really feel like Method and A are running out of time if Botar just plays safe here. Yeah, at the same time, if Sidu doesn't take too much pressure and he can say, able to keep his mana, they might be able to get something done when dampening stacks. We see the double hodge again, but beautiful plays from Botar every single time, preemptively bare form. There's no opportunities for a swap. We still have Aspect of the Turtle available on Fabio. We see the Iron Back now as he was taking a fair bit of damage with the Avenging Crusader up from Sidu. Once that expires, he could be in trouble. We're going to see Splice now. They need to get a fence. Oh, here comes oh. the Bloodlust at the same time. Swapsy forces it to the Ethereal form. He does not want to have to pop that cordon with Bloodlust up. Yeah, he's trying to reverse the pressure over onto Bean right now. A nice clone on Sidu is denying incoming healing, but Sidu answers it now with the Avenging Crusader. Sidu is leading the charge. Bean moving out. Smexon moving out. Trying to reconnect onto Fabio, but they swap to Botar. Botar on the run. Down to half HP. Blinks back away. Nice retreat from Botar. Smexon, though, now caught in the center. Swapping over to Swapsy. Swapsy in danger. No ethereal form available. Botar spamming out heals to keep him alive. Fabio and Swapsy on the run. Smexon and Bean are trying to be careful. Both these teams, man, this is so intense. They do not want to overextend. Smexon trying to pull them back. You can see Bean trying to pull back as well here. Fabio line of sighted at the moment, swaps him moving in, but really no pressure just yet as Method and A begin to retreat back to their defensive position in the room. Yeah, every single time Method and A push in, you see it's so scary. That's the thing. If they can just keep staying alive, they're going to create these opportunities where they can win the game. That's the weakness of Relentless, I suppose. If you are able to get those offensives without the trinket, you can definitely get the kill. Smexon now forced into the Astral Shift once again. Sidu still has the bubble. He has the Avenging Crusader active right now and the bop, so they definitely have the cooldowns to survive. They just need to keep doing these swaps Ooh. to Splice, eventually they could land the kill. Bloodlust Wombo out from Swapsy, trying to connect onto Smexon, but Smexon was ready for it in a good position with Sidu. Now Smexon turning it around onto Swapsy. Swapsy down to half. Botar answers it. Nice reaction time from Botar, trying to look for a clone, but gets line of sighted. Method and A with this hit and run play style. It's got them all the way to the final. They go in for their push, then they pull back. I really like it, but Botar is sneaking a drink. He's going to get a lot of mana, and mana is key to victory here. Stun onto Swapsy. He has Ethereal form to trade out here if he needs, so he pops the Doom Wins to reverse the pressure onto Smexon. Smexon down below half HP. Sidu's got a lot of work ahead of him. Yeah, they really need to keep Smexon alive at this point. They do have the cooldowns to do it. Again, able to hold on, but Swapsy once again dropping low, having to trade out that Ethereal form. There's no Iron Back available for Botar. The next swap could be dangerous for Swapsy, but at the same time, Method struggling, dampening up to 10%. Now the adaptation force on Sweetu. The next CC will be for Smexon. No Ethereal form. He's dropping down to 30%. Double silence comes out. Here's the Bloodlust. They're trying to get offensive. This is it. To Swapsy. If they can land the kill here, this could be it. Full Hodge onto Botai is able to get the heals out. Ethereal form is not up for a while, but Ironbark is coming up in two seconds. That was a nice pullback by Swapsy, and now Splice are looking to push in. Method N8 once again retreating into the room. Fabio moving up, Swapsy moving up. Botar a little bit reluctant to go in there. He could easily go down in a stun if he overextends that Vortex sucking back Method N8. Method N8's defensive play is sick so far this game, but they need to try and set up a kill. Sidu's running out of time. He's down below 30% mana at this point. Splice are looking good. Dampening is ramping up, and they're basically getting free damage. Yeah, the drink from Botar.
Tower is paying off dividends and dampening. We can see he's at about 60% mana, completely leading the war. Now a Hodge offensively from Method. They're trying to get onto Fabio, Ooh. but he's just kiting away. He preemptively runs. Now Botar, the target of choice, into the DR Hodge. He might be in a bit of trouble. He has the box in available, just going to be able to kite away. And now we see the offensives. There is the Beast Mastery coming out of Fabio. He's trying to get damage onto Smexen. Answered immediately by the uh, Astral Shift on his side. The Adaptation Force also on Cedar, but Botar, he has to preemptively iron back himself. He's able to kite away, but they have forced another cooldown. Ultimately, both these teams, they still have so much that Splice are the ones that are maybe in the most trouble. Whoa, Ethereal Form forced onto Swapsy. Botar caught into a stun. Method and they have a lot of pressure at the moment here. Cedar looking to push in. They may actually decide to retreat. Fabio in center field. They're going after Swapsy for now. They've got him down to half. Smexen down to half. He's getting bursted as well from Fabio's offensive cooldowns. Cedar rotating effectively. He's got a lot of healing going. They should be able to recover. Method and A going back into the starting room, trying to bait Botar in. If they caught him in that stun, they might be able to burst him down. They're really looking for that miracle burst kill. Will they catch Botar is the question. Yeah, you can see what it means to the fans. There is so much intensity. This, could in be this it. game is 23% dampening and Swapsy now taking the damage. He doesn't have the affair of form, but he will be fine. Botar just able to free heal in the back, and that's the thing about playing the Restoration Druid. If Restoration Druids can free cast, they are the best healer in the game with those Cyclones, with those regrowths, and he is just, he's doing such a good job with this freedom to keep his team alive. Swapsy went for the Bloodlust there. He didn't get anything done with it. That was a huge bait by Method NA. They're going to have free reign when they decide to push out next. Cedu's mana is starting to even out for Botar. Dampening is stacking. Cedu's moving out. Stun on Fabio. Bloodlust gets popped. They're looking for a kill onto Fabio. Just not finding the damage just yet. Being knocking down. Splice is throwing them away from the fight. Swapsy now maybe getting swapped over to Botar trying to pre-hot. Going for some wild growth. Looking for a Cyclone. If he can find that. Not able to find the Cyclone just yet. Cedu seems to be doing fine for now, but he needs 17 more seconds. Smexen in trouble. Astral Shift gets popped. He's dangerously low. Swapsy looking to finish him off. Barely not able to reconnect, but a nice Cyclone from Botar will prevent Cedu from topping him off. Splice switched their attention to Bean. They've got him below half HP. Cedu has got a lot of work here. He's going for the hard cast, picking his team back up. He tops off Smexen. Bean still down to half. Splice are in a commanding position. Yeah, Splice are definitely leading this game, but Method can turn it around with any single Bloodlust, and look at Smexen. Oh. He has the Bloodlust available. Cedu dropping low. He does have the bubble. The Divine Shield will have to be popped here. He's going to struggle so much to top his team off, but at the same time, Method, they need to get the kill. Here's the double stun. Onto Swapsy. He does have the Ethereal form available. Down to 50%. He needs to consider popping that. Bloodless still available for Smexen, though. If they can force this Ethereal form without using Bloodless, they can set up a win condition for the next 30 seconds. Yeah, that's what they're trying to get. Swapsy's not going to give it. Swapsy pulling back. Fabio pushing up now, trying to pressure Sidu. Sidu down to 30% mana. How much more can he take? 33% Dampening is ramping up. Botar's moving in. He's looking to chain Bean Slayer into a Cyclone chain while Smexen and Sidu are pressured inside of the room at the moment here. Botar doesn't want to throw the game at any point. If he gets caught in a stun swap, it could be the end of the match. They're going to stun Fabio. Fabio's overextended. Huge burst coming down to half HP. But luckily, he gets the aspect of the turtle up. That defensive shield keeps them going as they push for Sidu. They're looking for the throw. Sidu down to 30%. How will he survive? He mounts up to try and get away, but he's got basically nothing left. He gets stunned up. He's barely seen alive. Avenging Crusader is his last step as he goes toe to toe with Swansea. Yeah, buddy, 6% Daphne. There's no way Cedar's getting out of this one. Full hex up to Botai. He doesn't even dispel it. The crowd goes wild as Cedar is so playing a Prince Tournament live there. There's the Avenger Crusader all fall in five seconds. He's going to go down so surely. They just got a full uptime, but at the same time, Smeg, Swansea in so much trouble. He's taking the counter pressure. They're trying That's to catch They might get the kill to Swansea. Both of these players could go down so easily. He gets the reconnect. That's it. Cedar's going to fall. Survive. They leave the game as Splice lead the series three to two. Oh my God! Method and A played that out for the long game, but Splice were more than prepared. Botar switching to this Resto Druid is proving to be key in this series, and they are one win away from taking the championship. Yeah, one game away from heartbreak. Method need to come up with something now. That game was so close. They could stick to the composition, but how do you risk it when you're one game away from handing Splice their second consecutive BlizzCon title? It's going to be such a 
stressful situation for them. You can see they're kind of gutted by that game. They were so close. They almost caught Fabio overextending on the pillow at about 30% dampening. He's surviving on about 20% HP. Such a close game. But it's just these little things that do decide these high intensity matches. What really impressed me is every time they did go on, on Fabio, they were able to save his aspect of the turtle. And that's really what made that match drag out for so long. You know, there was instant iron bark every time they even looked at him. So uh, if you are playing a prop paladin and you can spec into the talent that lets your taunt increase damage to the target by 20%, uh, everyone else, you'll see a little crosshair above their heads too. So you can kind of see what uh, method is going to go on constantly during those matches. Yeah, for sure. So definitely who beans hitting, like you say, it gives the extra 20% damage. That is why Smex, and every time he does connect to a target, it's the most scary thing. That's why they're able to get these one-shot kills during the stuns. So it's, and that's the thing, that's what they're playing for, right? They live eight, nine minutes. They have a very tanky composition, of course, with the prop paladin, as you can imagine, the additional healing, all the additional tools, very useful but they just need to get one good setup. They thought Black Root Hold would help them with that because the smaller map, more opportunities. But honestly, MVP of that game goes to Botar. So many preemptive iron bugs, so many preemptive bear forms. He just read method like an open book every single time. And that's how come his team was able to survive so long to get that kill. Yeah, All so right. at this point, I think Method and A need an answer for Botar. If they don't have a composition that can punish a resto druid, then this is going to be very hard for them to come back. They have to win two in a row, whereas Splice only need one. Splice are sitting comfy right now. Ah, oh, man, I am stressed for Method and A. This could be a heartbreaker. Let's take a look at a couple moments from that last match in Black Recold. I mean, what an exciting match. It was so back and forth. Yeah, it was. And there's so many opportunities for the game. This is, of course, the end of the game. 37% damage uh, of healing reduction with the dampening buff there. And Sidu, he was surviving for such a long time. And that almost gave the opportunity to win the game. Smex him with the Bloodlust available. Maybe he should have just considered popping it onto Swapsy here to try get that kill. He didn't want to use it into the Iron Bug, but he didn't have enough time. Swapsy able to get the leap onto Sidu and secure the kill. Yeah, the reconnect from Swapsy at the end ultimately cost Sidu his life. At the end of the match, now Method and A need to consider, are we going to play a really defensive play style? Or are we going to switch back? Are we going to bring Snuts in? Because we'll have the composition advantage in this position. I feel like the Demonology Warlock Burst would be much more scary for Swapsy as he's running the Ethereal form. That's only immunity to physical damage. So if you bring in a Warlock that's doing some magic damage, you suddenly, he can't be that greedy. He can't Ethereal form at 5% health. He has to use it earlier. So I really want to see Snuts. Yeah, and you can hear the crowd are going absolutely crazy. Method need their energy now more than ever one game away from losing this series. And I completely agree with you. Not only is it the burst from Snuts, though, I really do believe it's the interrupts, because right now, Botar is probably if not the best druid, one of the best druids in the entire world. In this series, he's able to cast whatever he wants. He's able to get the cyclones, despite the LOS from Method. Every time they push in, they only have the wind shear and the long-range silence from Bean to stop that. So he's just basically free casting the entire game. They need to put in snuts. They need the long-range interrupts to shut down Botar. Otherwise, he's just going to dominate this series as he has many times before. All right, now that Splice is up by one, will we need a game seven? We're going to let these players set up, and we'll be right back after this. Warcraft Arena World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. The store. Prepare for Heroes Brawl, the new game mode that breaks all the rules. Rated T13. Ah, 
Gadget Sam. Gadget Sam, where the gangs rule the streets. <laughs> Gadget Sam, full of swindlers and cheats. Sip and sing, a ring a ding ding on the mean streets of Gadget Sam. Welcome to the big time, pal. On the mean streets of Gadget Sam. Now who's got the upper hand? <laughs> of Azeroth, I have witnessed our end. Demonic armies spilling over the horizon and on to our shores. Heed my warning, the Burning Legion has returned. Stronger, more determined than ever before, these demons seek to annihilate everything upon Azeroth. single person can stand against the Legion alone. And so you came to me. I will deal with these intruders. No, no she wouldn't. I knew we couldn't trust her! In the end, death claims us all. The Legion cannot be stopped. Our time is short. Now go. But remember, should you fail, all worlds will burn. of the storm play free and experience the new starcraft themed battlegrounds we did t for teen the world of warcraft arena world championship is sponsored in part by intel t-mobile nvidia and republic of gamers there's so much energy here in this room already they've been practicing and battling it out all year long all their hard work is for this once you're there, once you're on that final stage, realizing that your team is now the best in the world, nothing can compare. You guys definitely seem to be positioning yourselves well for a back-to-back -back BlizzCon title. Now Frosty has overstayed his welcome. Big Bird's coming in. No dispersion. Method NA will advance to the semifinals. He cannot escape. Smacks it. Method will blow him out of the water. Advancing to the ground. Survive. Jamila needs to get those CCs out. Splice is going to take this series three to one. They will be playing in the grand finals for that $120,000 first place prize, as well as the title of Arena World Champions. All right, welcome back, everyone. It's coming down to these last couple games. Splice, of course, is now in a commanding spot up 
one game over, of course, the team of Method. Sidu really needs this next map. Can they force a game seven? Yeah, there's no better feeling right now for Splice, but Method are not out of it yet. They only need two games, one to force that final seventh game. The question is going to be, what composition do they bring out? Do you stick with the exact same, the Prop Paladin enhancement? We've seen Bean doing such a phenomenal job, but Botar, every single time, he's all over their play. They need something that can shut down this healer. I actually can't believe that we are at the final last chance for c and Method NA. They're going to be facing that second place spot that nobody wants to be in. They want to be the champions, whereas Splice can sit comfy knowing that they've got two more games to sit back on. Even if they lose this, they'll still have one more second chance. So Splice is going to play with confidence. Method NA need to pull that out of nowhere, basically. This is such a stressful situation. All right, and let's find out what map we will be playing on for this game six. And there we go. It is going to be Tiger's Peak. Yep, this is Method's map choice, of course. Sidu's last chance at BlizzCon, so he says on his stream. And they have chosen Tiger's Peak as what could potentially be the last game of the series. It's a slightly, it's a slightly more neutral map than the one we just saw. Blackbrook was kind of an all-in strategy. They don't really have the same pillars, although they can kind of LOS around the balcony a little bit. In, and that's kind of like, if they're going to choose a composition that shuts down Botar, they need to be around these pillars. Sidu needs to be able to LOS him, and then when Botar pushes in, that's when they go for the stuns that's when they go for these offensive players that can maybe secure them the kill. And this remaining map pool looks so good in the favor of the Splice. You've got Tiger's Peak, which is going to be the balanced map that could force a game seven if Method can do it. But then you have to pick between Blade's Edge and Ruins of Lordaeron. Yep, and those are basically the two extremes. Yeah, Runes of Lordaeron could be a final resting place. Of course, Method and A are going to look to strike back. I'm sure that they will find confidence. They need to break out something different. I just feel like that strategy of baiting Botar in, Botar's not falling for that. You're not going to fool him. So at this point, they need a different strategy. They need to get aggressive in his face and start punishing him for playing that much more fragile healer than the Paladin. Yeah, Bowtie is just playing, doing such a phenomenal job. And these guys are such veterans. Both these teams have so many BlizzCons. I think there's like 22 BlizzCons between the two sides on, uh, like in the seven players that are playing in this final. So Method can't kind of do the old tricks of surviving a really long time and then expecting a mistake from Splice. Instead, they need to get the outplays. They need to be the team forcing the issue because right now they're waiting for Splice to overextend. They're waiting for Botar to make a mistake and he's just not doing it. All right, and let's take a look at the composition. Splice, what are they going to bring out? They're doing so well with this Beast Cleave. Are they going to stick with it? I would imagine so. It's really just Botar playing Druid. Yes, Botar will be playing Resto Druid. Swapsy will be playing Enhancement Shaman. And Fabio, of course, will be playing Beast Mastery Hunter. They're one win away from claiming their second championship in a row. And of course, Method and A are going to have something to say about that. Yeah, for sure. It's Fabio's third, potentially. He could be the first person ever to get to his third championship. In fact, in 2010, when Fabio picked up his first world championship, his first BlizzCon victory, it was against Snuts in a final that went all the way to the final game. So, so close. He's trying to repeat history here, but Method are definitely going to have something to say about that. All right, we'll have to see what Method has. This is a scary moment. Let's find out what composition Method is going to be bringing to this game six. What? Oh, Sinu on Holy Paladin, yeah. Snuts on Shadow Priest, and Bean is going back to the Kitty Dream. He will be playing Feral Druid in potentially their final game. The lean, mean Bean machine going back to his main. We love his Feral Druid. Does he have nine lives? That's going to be the question. The we also have to see how Snuts is his first time on the Shadow Priest. Method have done such a good job of picking up all these classes. They now have the opportunity. Shadow Priest Feral is supposed to be the counter to Restoration Druid. That was what Method you were so scared of. That's what Northern Gaming Blue was so scared of, picking the Restoration Druid. Can Botar keep up with Snuts and Bean's damage? But not only that, they need to keep Snuts alive. It's going to be an extremely scary match. You know, if you play a Shadow Priest at home right now, everything wants to kill you the entire game. Yeah, and we, we saw that. I mean, they kill Frosty before Disperse, they kill Zunyaki before Disperse. They're doing such a good job of killing these Shadow Priests, and now they put their own one. This is high risk, high reward for this team. Everything on the line on this Tiger's Peak game, and they bring out a composition which is completely fresh to the BlizzCon stage. We haven't seen any team play this. We haven't seen them play those two classes at all. 
so much risk on the side of method, but I love the fact they have the confidence and the experience to take this. Yeah, as so long as Snuts can bunker down, get all of his damage out, and get it rolling, he's going to become a lot more tanky as he has more damage over time effects up. And as long as he can bunker down and get that setup going, he should be able to just overrun Splice with that spread pressure damage. So really look to see if Snuts can get online early. Yeah, but the thing is, <laughs> when we watch these games, Splice's first global is Wolves and Bloodlust. And that's it. Every single time, a Shadow Priest has to be able to get out those Vampiric Touches out. Yeah, oh, the Shadow Priest has to be getting out that damage. He needs the Vampiric Touches immediately for the self-healing, but also for the counter pressure. That's going to be what happens. It's basically down to Snuts and Sidu in this game. If Sidu can keep Snuts alive, keep him offensive, the Blessing Protections, because we're expecting Splice to throw everything at them from the gates opening in this game. They need to get the offensive pressure, but we need to have been reaching Bota, stopping the Cyclones, getting the damage out, and then if Snuts is able to generate the spread oh. pressure, which we know he can, we're loading up into Tiger's Peak Arena for potentially the last game of BlizzCon 2016. Yeah, game number six, Tiger's Peak Arena. The match is about to begin. Splice are going to come out hitting hard, and Method need to be able to have the confidence to stick down, bunker through, and strike back. Snuts is playing Void Shift instead of side feet for this game. Yeah, that's a huge actually choice. It means he's going to have that extra defensive call and of course Void Shift brought back into the game in Legion. It means he can swap his health pool with a member of his party. So if anyone's low on his team and about to die, he will be using that. But he loses the side feet. So that's a lot of counter pressure. We've seen every other Shadow Priest, in fact, opting for that side feet. Cedar immediately taking so much damage. They basically, they decided to pop the Bloodlust immediately. They get him quite low, but they don't really force any cooldown. Swapping it now a little bit over onto Snuts. And Bean, we can see he's trying to just help out with the off healing right now. Keep team alive. Yeah, but Sidu's on the opposite side of the map. Snuts is getting bursted down. He needs to reconnect with Sidu. Sidu and Snuts now side by side, getting their heels going. Sidu's moving in. They're looking for a swap onto Botar. He's caught into a stun. They followed up with the silence. Botar trades out his bark skin. He should be safe. He's actually playing tree form. An interesting choice out from Botar. Will he allow him a lot of early burst healing right now? But when that tree form falls, that's going to be danger time for Splice. I really like the tree form actually from Botar. It matches the incarnation from the Feral perfectly. Both of them, of course, on the exact same cooldown, given they are the same ability, essentially. Ironbark now, though. Botar's caught in the tree form. He's in a little bit of trouble here, getting the offense. It's the DR bash. No box get available. No Ironbark. The entirety of Splice is melting Whoa. Botar down to touch the side. Pete's looking to finish him off. Fabio low. Botar low. He's able to get the heals low. He's starting to stabilize his team. Botar manages to snag his club. Bean trinkets out. Bean is looking for blood. Trying to reconnect on the Botar. He gets Vortex back. He jumps right onto him. Fabio getting low. Snuts is just solo. that he would have 100% died, still had to trade out his box in DR Bash, they've got so much pressure, the crowd is going wild in favor of Method, Snuts, he has the boy form active, so much damage from the Shadow Priest, and Splice is struggling so much to get pressure, but at the same time, they're slowly but surely recovering, but Fabio is in the shadow damage, 10% HP, they have nothing to keep him alive, he's struggling, he's kiting away, swaps in at the far side, With this spread pressure composition, stopping the competition as well. Now tying this up. It's unbelievable. Game number seven. Can they break the cast? Can Sidu win his first ever BlizzCon? They bring out the composition. The Feral Shadow Priest, the spread pressure was way too much for Botar to handle. And we're going into game seven. I was saying Snuts was going to be the guy to make the difference in that match, but Bean on top of that Druid over and over and over. The damage just didn't stop. Yeah, he didn't mess up any of his stuns either. It's so difficult playing without add-ons when you're playing the Feral Druid. Every single stun DR was on point from Bean. He knew how to generate the most pressure. And like we said, if he can just connect to Botar, Botar has to sit in the bear form. He's unable to heal his party. And that meant Snuts was soloing Fabio, soloing Snuts. There was no, uh, soloing Swapsy, sorry. There's so much damage coming out from this team. Botar just could not keep up. The question now is, Splice have the a comp advantage. That means he's not going to have to play Restoration Druid into this composition anymore. 
So method, do they blind pick this composition again? Do they go for the Shadow Priest Feral Druid and just kind of play it into whatever Splice decide to throw at them? So the pace of that map basically was Sidu at the beginning, he's playing Ultimate Sacrifice, so it's going to transfer a ton of damage back to him over time. But then they were splitting, so they were dealing damage to Sidu at the start and Snuts at the same time. So Sidu was taking a lot of damage. Now, uh, they just need to be able to survive through that initial burst on this comp, but unfortunately, they don't have the comp advantage anymore. Like you're saying, if they don't go Rester Druid, is, is he a viable kill target at that point? Are they going to be able to train Botar down? I definitely don't think Botar will be locking in Resto Druid specifically if they know they're going to be fighting the Shadow Priest comp. I feel like Holy Paladin would be much more tanky against that. I don't even think they'll lock in Beast Cleave. Honestly, they could play uh, the composition that got them here in the first place, which was Ret Paladin Assassination Rogue. That could be so scary for Snuts. It's going to lock him down. Like we were saying, he needs to get rolling, his ball going. And if he's got a Rogue sitting on him, a class with a lot of disruption, it's going to be the hardest match of his life. Yeah, for sure. And the other thing we also know is that the Mistweaver Monk is just so effective against Shadow Priest because of the counteract magic. It means that every time the Shadow Priest has dots on a target, he's just dealing so much healing. It's really going to deal with the kind of solo pressure that Snuts was able to generate. If you also have the Ret and the Rogue sitting on Snuts on the Shadow Priest, it's going to be so difficult. And that's what really makes me wonder, can Method afford to pick this composition again blind into Splice, who have already shown, despite their three-man rost three roster, they have so many compositions at their utility. All right, let's take a few glimpses of that last map on Tiger's Peak. Um, I guess this is slightly earlier in the game. It's just, there's so much pressure the entire time. Just look at Bota. He has so much mana. He has all his cooldowns like, used, rotating them through perfectly. There's no mistakes on the side of Splice here, but he just cannot really keep up with the damage. They're even generating good pressure onto Snuts, but Sidu always had the bop available. He was playing double bop in this game to make sure he had those cooldowns, and eventually they're able to take down Fabio just with the raw pressure. And that's something Snuts is great at. We see not so many Affliction Warlocks in this competition, but we see the Affliction Warlocks playing other classes as if they were Affliction Warlocks. We see him on the Shadow Priest with the spread pressure. We see Fabio playing Assassination Rogue, multi-bleeding. It's kind of been a theme for this tournament, and that's why they're so good at these classes. And, and we only have two maps remaining, so let's find out which map Splice has picked. Ends of Lord Iran. This could be the final resting place <laughs> for Method, but I have to say the damage from Method last game, I was shaking. Everybody was so low. They had so much pressure going for their side. If they can get that same ball rolling against a different composition, as I would expect from Splice, they could take it with that. Yeah, and like you say, this is this is a graveyard. It's going to bury one of these teams' BlizzCon dreams. Will it be Sidu on his last chance, or will it be the former BlizzCon champions trying to go for that second one to make history right now, take it home for Europe for a third year in a row? NA are the team, or Method NA are the team that can stop them. We'll have to see what they choose to lock in because this is a very aggressive map. This definitely favors those PB comps. What, what do you do with your method at this point? You have so many compositions available to you. You know what Splice can run unless they're hiding something for Game 7. I don't yeah. think they're hiding anything, but BlizzCon is like the tallest competitive, competitive mountain for World of Warcraft esports in general. And we're at the final game seven. They've gone all the way to the top. They're one step away from getting that glorious view of victory. Who is going to take it, you guys in the audience? Do you think Method and A have got this? <laughs> It's going to be a bit of bias here, but who's here for Splice? Is anyone? Splice, come on. Somebody here has to be supporting Splice. All right, here. These players are amazing. Come on. These guys have been around for such a long time. They both must have built up some fans. Of course, the home crowd definitely in favor of Method. I'm wondering, so we have this blind pick from Method right now. They're on a very small map. We know it's going to advantage the Cleaves. I'm thinking maybe you just go back to that Prop Paladin Enhancement. We talked about how it can punish the rest of Druid. That seems to be Splice's answer to this. And this is the one map where they should be able to actually get connections on them. If they don't get kind of lax and try and pull back and hit Swapsy a lot, if they're really proactive with their gameplay, hitting Bota, I feel like that might be kind of like the best option that they have. Yeah, I, I think in that last map, especially on Black or Cold, I think Sidu may have been able to live at the end there. He actually ran out of line of sight to try to, you know, uh, bring himself up uh, behind the, the wall at the beginning of the starting area. But Bean actually had his Avenging Wrath active and could have been able to pump a few heals. So it might have been a slight miscommunication there. If they can just share that up, this comp could do it. Yep. 
And the games are so close, like you say, every single game going to eight minutes dampening, you definitely have high win conditions, high win percentages in that period of time, playing with the enhancement and the prop pattern. Just because it's so bursty, you're always going to have that chance to win the game. Whereas if you bring out the Shadow Priest Peril, sure, that you have the 100% win late river on the stage right now, but with the counter comps potentially, there's a reason this isn't seen as a tournament composition. It's because it was brought out as a counter pick, the pocket pick from Method, bringing them to game seven, but I'm not sure it will be enough to take them all the way. They basically have to say, are we afraid of Botar's Resto Druid? Because if we lock in Prop Paladin, we know Botar is going to go on Resto Druid, and that could be terrifying. But if they lock Snuts in on Shadow Priest, then they need to be afraid of the Assassination Rogue. There's a threat on both sides. That's why Splice is advantaged in this Game 7, having taken that early lead. So basically, at this point, Method and A need to decide, are we afraid of Fabio, or are we afraid of Botar, and build the composition around that? All right, we don't have to wait very much longer. This is the most important decision Method NA has made in a very long time. Let's see what they're going to play. They're going to do it. Oh my God, they're going to stick to it. It's the Holy Paladin, Shadow Priest, being on the Feral Druid, two very... <laughs> this, is, this is where we come down to it. Are they calling Splice's bluff here? Do Splice have something that answers this composition? I would really like to see the Assassination Rogue. I feel like that would be their most confident lock-in. There's no Rep Paladin or Prop Paladin to try and counteract that Rogue. Snuts is basically unprotected. It's up to Sidhu to keep him going in the earlier parts of the game. Uh, rogues can Cloak of Shadows off those dots, which lowers the healing output from Snuts as well. So I feel like an Assassination Rogue pick would be critical for them in this match. And just look at the determination on their faces as well. They want this. They need this almost. Sidhu has been trying so long. Snuts has been five times. This means every to these guys. This summarizes their entire year. All right, and of course, the team that can stop them is Splice. This is game seven. Let's see if they have an answer for that comp. Oh, oh. they're going to go with the Enhancement Shaman, Demonology, Warlock, Holy Paladin. So they're going to break out the composition that uh, I like this we're pick. playing. And it, it could be really bursty. I feel like it's still susceptible to the spread pressure is so long as Method can survive the first 30 seconds of the match and get their damage rolling, I feel like they can still take this. I would definitely say this is still anyone's match. Now, the, the big part about this comp uh, that they're playing against is Swapsy really can't play Ethereal Form at this point because it's only melee damage, like you were saying. Yeah, for sure. He won't be playing the Ethereal Form. As you say, it's a five-second immunity to all melee damage, whereas the Astral Shift, it lasts longer. It's a damage reduction for all schools of damage, so it's definitely going to be his choice. He won't have that complete immunity to damage at the same time, so definitely a reasonably high-risk play coming out from Splice here. They're trying to beat Method at their own game, bringing the comp that's brought Method so much success. Of course, it is their main classes. It's Fabio on the Warlock, Swapsy on the Enhancement. That's what these players are known for. Botar's played four different healers in this year's Road to BlizzCon. He's been so versatile. These guys should be really epped on these classes. The question is, is it going to be enough to take down Method, who looks so determined and looks so good throughout this entire tournament? Yeah, we're really going to have to look out for Swapsy with his Stormbringer uh, passive ability. If he gets lucky and rolls some procs and gets lots of Storm Strikes, that could be the end of Method. So Method need to be on their toes the entire match, afraid of death, afraid of their tournament lives on the line the entire time. This is going to be the most intense match both of these teams have played. This is the highest intensity match I think I've seen at any BlizzCon ever up to this point. Both teams coming down to, to that Game 7. All right, you have to give you, this team your energy. This is Game 7. This is for everything. Yeah, Splice are defending their championship. Method are looking to take their first. Runes of Lord are on potentially the final resting place. Yeah, potentially. Well, it will be for one of these teams. We don't know who just yet, but this decides BlizzCon 2016. The winners of this game take home $120,000. Based on this one decision, $70,000 is on the line here. Snuts instantly, he opens up, he gets the fear onto the DPS. They're trying to play offensive immediately. Botar Ooh. having to use this human trinket already, but Snuts dropping low straight out of the gate. Yeah, Botar leading the charge with Swapsy, keeping high pressure on Snuts. Sidhu sees it coming. Trades out his Avenging Crusader to try and get some healing rolling going here. It seems like they both teams have stabilized with those Paladin defensive cooldowns. Snuts now going for the Void Farm, but he drops the Fell Lord on him. Snuts getting lifted down. He needs to be careful. The Stormbringer procs are coming out, forcing the dispersion out from Snuts. This is not looking good for Method. They're trying to make a miracle here as they swap to Botar, forcing the bubble immediately. Botar playing that so safe, but now he's an opening target. Snuts down below half still. Will he go down? Senior caught into a stun. This could just be it. Snuts down to half. Trying to finish him off. Snuts goes for the master spell. Not able to find it. He live swaps. Sidhu now getting stunned up. He may just need to bubble. Snuts is under so much pressure. How are they going to hang in? Yeah, 
uh, the void ship and the submersion down on Snus, but he has the void form. They need to get to bow tight. The Avenging Crusader pop now, but he has no bubble. Beam trying to get offensive here. You can see the incarnation is down. No Snus, triple flare on to Splice, but he's in so much trouble. Sidhu still has the bubble available. He should be able to keep his team alive for a little while, popping that Avenging Crusader, but caught up in the hodge. Snus still not out the woods. Yeah, Snus is still down below half. He needs to pull off a miracle at this point to stay alive. Sidhu is getting into the fight. They stun up Botar. They're looking to try and swap to him. He used his bubble earlier. If they can catch him in that silence, Snuts not able to find the silence just yet. They're going to save that for the next attempt, but Snuts is running out of time. Fabio is bursting him. He's down below half. Snuts needs to pull off a miracle. He's trying to get his dots going. Bean is throwing up those healing touches. Those healing touches really the only thing keeping Snuts going. Bean leaps in for the kill, but Fabio fears him away. Fears him away again. Cedar trying to keep Snuts going. They need to stay on top of Botar. Botar trades out the blessing of protection to keep his team going. Snuts now getting bursted down low. He's being dispersion. Comes up in two more seconds. He needs to stay alive for one more second. Now he has that safety net. Sidhu is held onto his bubble. He should be able to deflect this attack if he needs to. They saw that Botar with the third target drop. Sidhu has to bubble. Botar in trouble as well as he goes down below half HP. But Bean just cannot connect. Snuts down to half. Method's entire team down to half HP. He first. He has to disperse. Method are hanging on by the edge of their seats. Yeah, Method have no defensive cooldowns available. Basically, the bubble's down on Sidhu. No life swap, no dispersion on Snuts. They need your energy as they put Botar into the silence, a preemptive blessing of protection is keeping him alive though. Beautiful plays by Botar in game seven of BlizzCon 2016. Okay, so Splice's pressure is going to be a little bit low here. Bloodlust is not available for 23 seconds, but if Method cannot kill them in 23 seconds, it's going to be looking very grim. Sidhu caught into a fear at the moment. He pushes in for the stun on Botar. They're looking for the kill on Swapsy. Swapsy sees it coming, immediately retreats back to Botar. Bean is looking to set up for the swap. This next stun on Botar could easily be the end of the match if they can connect, but Sidhu's under fire. He uses his last line of defense. Two more seconds on his biggest cooldown. He barely gets that heal. Squeaked out in time. Method and eight. They've recovered. They need to go, go, go. On to Botar now. They've got him down to half. They need the stun. They need the silence. They're looking for the kill, but they pop Bloodlust in reverse. Snatch could be in trouble. He's got nothing left as well. Barely recovering. Full hex on Sidhu. Followed up by the fear. Snatch is completely alone. Botar and Swapsy looking to finish the job. Stun onto Sidhu. Snatch is barely hanging on. He could easily just go down. He's so fragile in this position. Yeah, but Method have won the game. If they can just stay alive here, Snuts just needs to live a few more seconds. Incarnation is up in one. No bubble, no bob, no Avenger Crusader. Here comes the Incarnation. That's him. That's it. Into the ball. It's got a ball. There's nothing he can do. The mighty match DR. He doesn't have anything left. So many appeals from Swansea. They're desperately trying to get the It's going to pull shot. He's able to get a bind to pillar. The incarnation still up. That's 10%. He has bubble in seven seconds. Botar lives and so do Splice's dreams. Silence on the Botar. They're still looking to finish up. Botar reverses it with the Avenger Crusader. Now Zidu. Zidu has nothing. Both Paladins are on the rope. How are they going to pull this off? Botar's not able to dispel, but he uses his bubble. He will be safe inside of that. Now Zidu is in trouble. Bloodlust gets popped. And Splice are looking to turn this around. And Blodger connects. Zidu barely hanging on. Splice wins the kill on to see you such a close game, but you have your BlizzCon Champions 2016 from Europe. Splice, the second consecutive year they've won the title. Porter, Swansea, and Fabio managing game seven. I don't even know what to say about Botar's play in that game. The gateway to get away. The, the Hodge coming off the peel. Oh, I'm speechless. That was the closest game we've ever had in a BlizzCon final. There's no way anyone will ever remember this. Botar on 5%. The incarnation kitty from being not enough to win, secure the BlizzCon. And in the end, Fabio and Swapsy, they were able to connect the burst onto Sidhu. He had nothing left. He could not have played the game better. And at the end of the day, we have our champion Splice. You can see such good sportsmanship on this team, instantly running over to shake the hands. But Method just looked gutted at this point. That was one of the most intense, if not the most intense grand finals we have ever had. Splice defend their title, the two time in a row champions of BlizzCon. Everything was so, so close. Botar down to 2% hit. Uh, two percent health gates away. Avenging Crusader comes back up. They switch it back onto Sidu. Sidu had a few seconds left before his Avenging Crusader was going to come up. Wow.
You can only imagine what was going through their, their comms when that happened. Botar must have been screaming that he was dead. You can see they lift oh. the trophy. They're so happy. The second year in a row that these three are able to pick it up as a three-man roster, just adding to the impressiveness. But credit to Method NA. It was such a close series. That is a matchup they should never be winning, I believe. Definitely, that was the counter pick from Splice. And Method so close to taking it regardless. All right, Jackson, I want to hear from the players themselves. Thanks, Jared. So I'm standing by with our first time ever back-to-back -back World of Warcraft Arena World Champions Splice. Give it up for him, guys. All right, so first of all, first impressions. How does it feel to be the first guys to ever put it, you know, ever win two of them back-to-back? Feels great. Uh, I mean, I won my first BlizzCon six years ago. Then I took a break, I came back, and I won two in a row. So yeah, feels, feels great. Those teammates are like the best. They always try their best. They always play really sick. We always play better in tournaments because, to be fair, we were losing a lot in war games in backstage to like almost every team. And then when we play here, we always beat them. It's like cr crazy. So one thing to talk about, I think, is your decision to start playing Resto. I think the Resto Druid, once you brought that out, it turned things around for you and it gave you the opportunity to pick your comp in this very last game. How do you think that affected you in terms of you know, the outcome of the tournament? I'll come over there. I think playing Restorate was huge for us because Restorate gives you more control against Cleaves. Uh, we didn't expect their prot um, comp to be this strong again because last time they just lost. But now they played really good and we were kind of surprised by that. So I was like, Holy Pally is annoying because you can't get away. You can't make plays, you can't clone them. So I chose to go Restorate. My team wasn't sure because you can get the control going, long games, drag them. Awesome. So one. Oh, absolutely. That's what I was about to, you know. We, we have a ton of people hanging out here, tons of people watching from around the world. I know you guys came a long way to come win this tournament. Yeah, shout out away. I just want to say thanks to Blizzo. He was our fourth player in online qualifier, and then he couldn't attend the, the LANs. Without him, we, we wouldn't be here because he plays sick in online qualifiers and he qualifiers. So yeah, thanks to him. Thanks to Looney. He's our like, uh, friends that we always talk to and tell craft with. And, uh, and Zipa, another friend. And once again, do you have any... Would like to say something? Absolutely. Oh, you. Yeah. Uh, also, another shout out to Bluxdark for motivating us to keep to stick together as a team. Absolutely. And do you have any words for you know people in the crowd today and people watching at home? Nothing. I hope you enjoyed the show and uh, it was really close. It feels like every final is close since forever now, and it should be like fun to watch. Well, you guys put on a great show for us today. Congrats. This trophy is for you, and we have lead PvP designer Brian Holinka coming out with the rest of them. Congrats, guys. Wow, I'm, just, I'm exhausted after that. I don't know how you guys could, you know, you must be tired. That was everything we could have possibly hoped for, for a grand championship here at BlizzCon. Thank you to Method for being awesome competitors, and congratulations to Splice on becoming the 2016 World of Warcraft World Champions. Guys, that's gonna wrap it us, wrap it up for us here on stage. You guys were fantastic. Thank you so much to the, our live audience and everybody from watching from around the world. We are done here on stage. Let's send it back to Jared. Take it away, man. All right, thank you very much. Look at those guys, our first ever back-to-back -back BlizzCon champions. Yeah, and one thing that really struck me is just look at the sweat on Bobar's face. This was so intense. It really physically tires you when you have to put so much into it. They're posing for their pictures now. They're so happy. A very concise place there, taking the World Championship twice. Very good play coming out from them. And I love the understanding that Botar has of the game. He was able to take that risk. He had so much confidence in his restoration druid, controlling the game and controlling the series to ultimately win them the title. Yeah, you could hear the exhaustion in their voices. You could tell they were yelling their hearts out in that last match. Method really put them to the test. They almost came out on top, but Splice ultimately are your champions for 2016. Yeah, what an exciting match. A game seven to end it. We had so many maps. We saw Black Grip hold in that series. 
Yeah, basically everything happened in that entire series. It was so close. We cannot emphasize the two. I think the two big takeaways from this are certainly the fact that it was such a close series, so well fought by Method. But at the end of the day, we have our champions from Europe. All right, and I want to thank everyone for watching. This has been the most exciting BlizzCon finals we've ever seen. And I'm sure you guys are going to be back next year to watch our 2017 championship.